Live from Alta Vista High School, it's time for Colonels football. The Alta Vista Colonels on 105.5 KD Country taking on another one of their rivals, their big rival, the Gretna Hawks, on a Thursday night. Yes, it's Thursday night football. I'm Kyle Haney. With me, the man of the hour. He's too sweet to be sour, Mr. Dennis Jarvis. And, Dennis, we've got uh, some interesting weather for our Thursday night football game tonight. You know, we do. It was uh, raining before, and it kind of reminds me of Forrest Gump. We didn't have any rain. Now we got itty-bitty rain out there, and uh, the guys are warming up. And, you know, uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of odd. It's the eve before trichodecophobia. It's the <laughs> second time we've played the heated rival down 29 from Gretna, who really put a hurting on us three weeks ago. Yeah, there's plenty of storylines in this ball game. The Alta Vista Colonels playing the Gretna Hawks for the second time this season. Colonels, of course, coming off another loss. Last week it was 34-6 to against Dan River. The Hawks tasted their first bittersweet kiss of defeat last week. It was a 21-20 to loss to the William Campbell Generals, a game that came right down to the wire. Dennis and I will talk about that ball game. We'll talk about what the Colonels did last week, and then, of course, we can recap what these ball clubs did in their first matchup a few weeks ago. Let's hear it from the head coach, Mr. Mike Sharnas, though. I got a chance to catch up with him, and I asked him some of those same questions, and we'll get to hear his answers right after this quick timeout. It's high school football. It's Thursday night lights tonight. The Gretna Hawks taking on the Alta Vista Colonels. You're going to hear it live on 105.5 KD Country. The game is brought to you by these members of the Katy Country Sports Club. Radio Shack and Crystal Bay Pools, serving your area since 1989 for swimming pool installations, chemicals, liners, and more. El Cerrito, throw on a sombrero, shake your maracas, it's El Cerrito time. Authentic Mexican cuisine only El Cerrito can serve up. One Stop Mart, Main Street, Alta Vista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken is kicking. McDonald's of Alta Vista, proud supporter of the Alta Vista Colonels. Stop by or drive through before or after the game. The Dairy Freeze, with hot dogs, burgers, fries, and of course, ice cream. They're doing it right at the Freeze on Main Street, Alta Vista. Old Dominion Insurance, see Kim and Gil, your Erie insurance agents on Main Street, Gretna, next to Tyler Flower Shop. Thanks for sponsoring tonight's broadcast on 105.5 KD Country. Pension, bench, funeral, and cremation service. Family serving families since 1905. Service you can trust and prices that work for your family. During the moments in life that matter, you'll be able to feel the difference made by family ownership. Finch and Finch, family serving families since 1905. Your high school sports station with award winning coverage on 1055 KD Country. We return to English Stadium for some Thursday night football. The Gretna Hawks in town to take on the Alta Vista Colonels. Round two between these two teams this season. We're chatting with head coach Mike Sharnas and uh, Coach Sharnas some. Unique things about the game tonight, obviously, but let's recap last week just a little bit. Uh, you played very good in the first half against Dan River, and they made some mistakes that helped you, but you played well, and then in the third quarter, they just seemed to take over. What were your impressions of the third quarter there? Yeah, they took they took over. I think a lot of it a lot of it had to do with um, they're better they're a better football team than we were. We played very good defense in the first half, and uh, offensively, once again, we just couldn't get anything together. Uh, and uh, it's it was we think we dressed we end up dressing twenty kids and uh, whether it sounds like an excuse or not we ran out we ran out of gas and that's uh, we got tired our kids got tired they're playing both ways they're playing on the special teams and 
Dan Rivers not. They're playing one way, and, and that's um, that takes a toll on your team. And it, and it uh, talking to the kids the next week, uh, this past week, he said, yeah, they were they, they were tired and at, at halftime. They were tired. They, they exerted a lot of energy, I thought, playing defense. And that was the biggest the biggest thing there. But I was proud of how they played definitely in their first half. Yeah, it really went well, and you mentioned the special teams. I thought Shaheen Pinnell's punting very good. You played the field position game there. Uh, any other guys that, that stood out to you from their performances last week against Dan River? Uh, yeah, we, we've had a number of – individual-wise, I can't come up with any names here, but I think deep defensively, uh, the first thought is defensively. Uh, we talked about our – I talked to our D, D linemen about trying to be a little more aggressive, make some plays, make tackles on defense, and I thought they were. I thought our linebackers, uh, Jaden Martin, got put in a, um, as an inside linebacker with John uh, Montague and Daniel Triplett. Uh, I thought those three guys played played well from the linebacker position and uh, gave us a good boost, especially in the first half. Well, let's move forward to this week, the Gretna Hawks. Uh, you played them a couple weeks ago, so we know the scouting report, obviously. Tell us a little bit about how the Thursday game changed your schedule this week. I mean, maybe just one day with pads on, I guess. Yeah, pretty pretty much something it, where it just was subtracted by a day, but uh, yeah, we we uh, just played them, so we don't need the full day. So I'm I'm kind of glad we are playing on Thursday, with the kids having the uh, the days off with the fall break. Um, but you know, with this ball game, we've got a at their place. We uh, they're a good football team. They're 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 on paper they're a better football team than we are. They're quicker than we are. They're faster, but we've got to play more aggressively defensively. Um, we, we just didn't seem to be ready to, to go at them defensively. And we've had some issues offensively with, with blocking the right people, knowing who to block. And, and if we can sustain, you know, I told the kids, I said, stranger things have happened as far as losing 39 to zip to them. Uh, you, can beat the, you can beat that team two weeks later if you do the things that you're uh, coached up to do and get excited, and, and uh, it can be done. So, you know, hopefully our kids are going to come in with that, that type of attitude. Well, you've got a little bit of experience with this. You guys played Campbell uh, multiple times in the regular season a few years ago. As a coach, as a coaching staff, I mean, do you do you mainly watch the previous game against Gretna on tape? What what, what exactly is the the thought process when you're playing a team the second time? Or maybe I'm overselling it. Maybe the thought process doesn't change that much. Well, I think it, the thought process is is pretty much that you look at the previous game. But it can be – you can have different variables that, that take place, whether it's, uh, you know, you have certain injuries or people not playing and the other team doesn't have people playing. Um, and it could change some things. But pretty much uh, I think folks are going to stick to what they do or trying to do. And uh, that's and you just try to do it without making mistakes. That, that's just called execution, you know. So that's what we're going to try to do a better job of tonight. Well, you mentioned injuries. Uh, you got a couple guys on your football team that have been unable to get out there the last few weeks – uh, talk about those guys and perhaps their status for the rest of the year. Yeah, Aaron Close has been out uh, the last few games with a with a rib or cartilage uh, issue in his in his chest, his upper upper chest, and it's a, a little different type of injury. We're not sure exactly how long how long he's going to be uh, be out. Uh, we're not sure yet. And uh, Bailey Stennett's been out with a sprained knee, and hopefully after the break he'll be able to after our our off week our break. That he'll be able to uh, start start up and, and help help our football team. Good stuff, Coach. We'll let you run. It's Thursday night football between the Hawks and the Colonels. Kickoff in about 20 minutes on 105.5 KD Country. I'm Jeff Walker of First National Bank and the manager at our Main Street branch in Alta Vista. Did you know that local bankers have a lot more at stake in taking better care of you? You see, helping local customers like you be more successful is our only focus. And each customer is so important. So for your small business, construction, and personal loan needs, think of me and think of us first. That's local First National Bank. We'll help you bring home more bacon. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. It's cold in here. Will your heating system keep you warm this winter? Or will you spend a cold evening shivering under the covers? Have your heating system inspected today by Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling. Kent Tyree has over 20 years experience and specializes in heating, air, plumbing, and electrical. Licensed and bonded. Call for an appointment today. 309-2266. 309-2266. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling. Fun times are waiting for you at El Cazador. 
Alta Vista's oldest Mexican restaurant. Relax in comfort with daily food and drink specials, Mexican and American foods, and a children's menu too. Call for takeout or go online to ElCazadorVA.com. El Cazador is a proud supporter of community activities like high school sports and the Y. El Cazador is open 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. Stop by before or after the game. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. We return to English Stadium in Alta Vista, a misty, drizzly kind of a night here on this Thursday before Friday the 13th. You heard Dennis Jarvis discussing that. And last week, Dennis, as you heard Coach Mike Sharnas discussing, it was a victory for the Dan River Wildcats, 34-6. Uh, think back to that ball game in the first half. Boy, it was 7-6, to six, Dan River. We felt like it was a very close ball game, and it was up to that point. Third quarter was all Wildcats, though. Colonels just could not keep pace with that talented, talented Dan River offense and the talented Dan River defense, too. You know, let's go back to uh, Colonels started the second half with uh, uh, their first possession, uh, starting in the third quarter, and it was four consecutive series of four punts and three touchdowns by those visiting Wildcats. And I, I think Coach Sean has summarized it very well, uh, you know, just attrition. 20 active people on uh, 20 active men on our roster last Friday night. 20 seniors on that huge 40-plus member traveling uh, uh, team from Dan River, and just those sheer numbers. Uh, you saw it, we saw it. People here in the stadium saw it. People listening in heard it. But no lack of intensity. You're coming. You were coming off one week before the visitors tonight. They beat us 39 to nothing on the road. And, I think we all agreed, Coach Sharnas agreed two weeks ago. No emotion, very flat. Uh, no really idea that they, kind of since they didn't want to be there, we knew uh, from some reasons down there, uh, our team, we kind of sensed it too, that maybe it wasn't the right night for football for Alta Vista. But another week, another game. Another week, another game. It's a great point. The Colonels did show a uh, very much improvement from week to week there just from last week the Dan River game and the week prior to that against Gretna Colonels did look a lot better against Dan River the Gretna Hawks we mentioned they lost the ball game last week too, 21 to 20 against the William Campbell Generals Generals had a touchdown lead late in the fourth quarter Gretna drove down the field they scored instead of trying to kick the extra point and tie it up they opted to go for two coach Cole Simpson didn't feel real good about his kicking game. They missed a kick, uh, an extra point, that is, earlier in the game. And he felt like best chance to win was probably right there rather than try to kick and might miss it anyway. So they attempted to go for two, gave it to his best running back at the time. That was Jordan Berger, and he gets stopped uh, a few yards short. But I don't think Coach Cole Simpson and his guys felt too bad about the way they played last week. Now we can discuss... What uh, Would you rather be playing Gretna after a win and them still being undefeated, or would you rather have them lose that game last week? Obviously, the Colonels can't control that, but just some of those little psychological edges in there maybe. Who knows? Uh, you know, this is a different world. When you and I were growing up and we played football, uh, we were involved in sports, locker room talk was so-and-so's cousin at Sunday dinner ch after church. Uh, said something about you all. Now we've got Twitter. Now we have Facebook and Instagram. And these guys are drawing back and forth. They see each other more than you and I see each other. And we don't need any lack of motivation when it comes to Gretna. And, you know, you, you made a good point. They The, the Hawks went for a two-point conversion last week. They missed three extra points two weeks before us. So mm -hmm. we know there's a... We know what they are. They're another team coming in here to English Stadium with a RPO, run-pass option. And we saw what Jordan Berger, we saw uh, uh, DeAndre Miller, we saw these big guys last time in this young team, yeah. sophomores and juniors sure. in this team. So you don't need any motivation for our Colonels coming off a great first half, still good second half play last week against a very physical AAA team. Let's emphasize that, mm -hmm. AAA team. Now we're back to where we're playing our style of ball with our guys. And, and despite one win on the season, we're ranked very high. Got a lot of the optimism coming into this game, and I'm eager for it to hat on a hat, 
hit on a hit tonight. I, I think we're going to see a lot of physical play tonight. We'll see if the weather conditions have anything to do with the team's game plans, whether maybe they want to try and keep it on the ground a little bit more. We'll just have to wait and find out. We're about 15 minutes away from kickoff. I'm Kyle. He's Dennis. Katie is our sound engineer back at home base, and we're so glad you're joining us here on this Thursday night. Spotlight on the Colonels and the Hawks. Of course, two other teams in Campbell County are playing tonight as well. Brookville traveling to Rustburg to take on the Red Devils. We'll keep our eye on that one, and we'll talk more about this ball game when we return. It's high school football, Alta Vista and Gretna. Round two coming up on 105.5 KD Country. To become a Moose is an awesome feeling. You just can't belong to a better organization. I was born and raised in a Moose, and I'll be a Moose the rest of my life. My son is a Moose. We're three-generation Moose Loggers. That's, that's how it is with us. I hope everybody else that can join and become a member, you need to do it. You need to see what, what, it, what it does for us. Why I belong to the Moose. For friendship, for the children, and most of all, for the seniors. What are you waiting for? Stop by the Moose Family Center in Alta Vista to learn more about how you can be a moose. A short drive will save you money. This is Greg Walker with Feller Chevrolet. Our new 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty has many customers buy from us instead of the competition. It covers any vehicle purchased up to 10 years old with less than 150,000 miles, new or used. With our three-day money-back guarantee, you can buy with confidence. Where else can you get great prices, good selection, three-day money-back guarantee, and a warranty that gives you 10 years of protection? Come see us. You'll be glad you did. You can buy paint from any old yahoo who knows nothing about paint in one of those big box stores. For quality paint from people who really know paint, it's Davis Paints from your complete home center, Englishes. Davis Paints, which has been known for quality since 1921, is not just sold anywhere. Visit the new paint room at Englishes, your authorized Davis Paint dealer. Englishes. Englishes is your complete home center. On North Main Street, Alta Vista. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. Dennis and myself are, of course, looking forward to the Tuscan Italian Grill Halftime Show, where we'll get to share with you some information about our pregame meal at the Tuscan. That was a lot of fun, Dennis, but yeah, let's, yes let's wait for the halftime show for that. Let's talk more about these Alta Vista Colonels and the Gretna Hawks. The Hawks come into the ball game averaging 29 points per game. They're giving up 11. The Colonels are averaging just under 15 points per game. And it's a Alta Vista offense that hasn't scored a lot lately. They scored six last week, zero against Gretna, sixteen in that, or pardon me, thirteen in that loss to William Campbell. So lately, the offense has had some trouble getting going. Even though we have seen some bright spots from time to time, just not the consistency the Colonels need. But maybe that changes tonight. Maybe it does change tonight. I mean, we, we've got a good equalizer, right? We've got a young, uh, we've got a healthy Jacob Adams back, who's a leading receiver on the team. Uh, we've got Shaheen Parnell. I love it when you call his name. We've got him going to carry the load for us and Jonathan Montague. And, you know, you heard Coach talking about it pregame, too. We're a, a little bit of walking wounded. We've got a, you know, Aaron's not going to be in the game tonight. But we talked about these young men who came in last week and started playing a lot of names that we hadn't got to call them, yeah. Mr. Triplett, Mr. Moon. Really, you know, some young personnel played in some big – Big time football last Friday night. So, short week. We are ready. It's under our lights, the confines of wonderful English Stadium in the hometown of Alta Vista. And I always say, when the away team comes in, they're going to bring their A game, and you know they are tonight. Oh, certainly. Not like the Gretna Hawks need any extra motivation themselves to bring their A game, but it's a rivalry game. It's rematch time. It's rare that two teams get to rematch in high school football, and even more rare to have it happen in the regular season like this but scheduling conflicts both teams had trouble finding another game so they decided hey we're only 15 minutes down the road we'll get a pretty good crowd out let's play twice and the crowd does seem to be building here at Alta Vista I thought the poor weather conditions might keep some folks away and maybe it has but for the most part it looks like we're getting our usual crowd here the Gretna side is filling up over there as well we're about 10 minutes away from the kickoff we'll step aside for another Quick timeout, then bring it more. Talk, bring it back. Pardon me, and talk a little bit more about this ball game and oh, everything else that's going on. I'm Kyle. He's Dennis. Glad you're tuned in on a Thursday night. It's rivalry football time again. The Gretna Hawks in town to take on the Alta Vista Colonels. 
You'll have a ringside seat on 105.5 KD Country. Napa know-how. Getting the best usually costs a pretty penny. But when it comes to getting one of the best motor oils, your pennies don't have to be pretty at all. Because Valvoline Full Synthetic Motor Oil is only $5.59 a quart. So treat yourself to Valvoline Full Synthetic, now just $5.59. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. General States pricing. Sales prices do not include applicable state local taxes or recycling fees. Offer expires 9 30 17. Napa Auto Parts, Main Street, Alta Vista, across from Feller Chevrolet. Thinking of starting a business or expanding your company? Think about choosing Alta Vista as your location to invest and grow. Alta Vista offers low utility cost, broadband internet, US 29 access, and an attractive quality of life. You'll score big just like the Colonels. When you invest in Alta Vista, huddle up with the Alta Vista Office of Economic Development at Alta Vista Town Hall. PCM Industrial of Alta Vista offers mobile welding and repair services, fully equipped service trucks, certified craftsmen, and quick response to satisfy your needs. Contact PCM Industrial at powerconstruction.com. PCM Industrial is a fully insured Class A licensed contractor, OSHA and MSHA compliant. PCM Industrial Services of Alta Vista wishes Coach Charnas and the Alta Vista Colonels football team good luck in another winning season. Go Colonels! Your station for high school sports play-by-play -play is 105.5 KD Country. We return to the press box here at Alta Vista High School. Getting set for the Gretna Hawks to take on the Alta Vista Colonels. Hawks come in at 5-1 and one on the season this year. Mr. Dennis Jarvis and the Alta Vista Colonels 1-6. and six. Of course, we've been saying it for far too long now, but Alta Vista has not won a ball game since August. You know that they're hungry. The Gretna Hawks hungry to have a bounce back as they got their first loss of the season last week against William Campbell. And we talked about it the first time around, but it's worth repeating some of these points that we had uh, in game one between these two teams. Gretna has won some close ball games this year. Now, they have lost a close ball game at this point, but one possession games, one possession victories against Brunswick, Nottoway, and Radford. This is a battle-tested Gretna ball club. You know, I told you uh, and the listeners two weeks ago, uh, something that turned my head about this Gretna team was being on the road playing Radford in Radford's house and a very emotional night for, for Radford's team. A young man was diagnosed with uh, le uh, some type of leukemia, and it was his night to shine. And, and, you know, they went on the road and won, but last week. Let's talk about this Gretna team last week. Going on the road over to a tough single-A powerhouse in Campbell County and come that close comes down to do you go for a two-point conversion or tie it up? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm shocked. I really thought Lynn Campbell would, would uh, own them. It was their homecoming night. Uh, the, yeah, you were surprised yeah. it was that close. Yeah, correct? it was. I, called, I told you I said 45-30, something like that. But, no, I, I, I give uh, – there's a little bit of a mental edge now. You, does, does Gretna come here? You know, they're, they're questioning – that play, this missed tackle, this drop pass, you know, the kicking game. Had we just been able to to not worry about getting a two-point conversion, who knows what happens in overtime. There's such a is, a, is a mental game in there. These are young guys, but they are battle-tested, as you said. But let's talk about our battle-tested uh, colonels, Kyle. The big boys we've played. Yeah. You know, we played that murderer's row schedule, and, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about you know, we've got, we're healthy, we've had some rest, we've got some guys back, we've got a new addition, we've got a kicker tonight. So, you know, we're not going to see Shaheen trying to do everything, potentially. So, I'm a little excited about what the outcome is. Well, you're right. The Colonels are battle-tested. Maybe not quite in the same way as Gretna. They don't have the victories to show for their battles, but they've played a very, very tough schedule, and you feel like at some point maybe that pays off down the road. It's almost National Anthem time here from Alta Vista High School, but not quite yet. While we have one moment, let me tell you about the folks that make our broadcast possible. Napa Auto Parts of Alta Vista. Find your Napa know-how on Main Street. El Cazador, Alta Vista's original Mexican restaurant. English Construction, wishing our high school athletes an exciting and injury-free game. Tyree Littles, heating and cooling, keeping you cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and comfortable in between. PCM Industrial Services, now with mobile welding and repair service. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development, we invite you to come find one of a kind. 
Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service, a family serving families since 1905. Highview Motors, GMC, from small to tall, Highview has it all. D.L. Bryant, heating and cooling. Call Donnie at 841-1580. That's 841-1580. The Moose Family Center in Alta Vista. Stop by the Moose Family Center on Lynch Mill Road to learn how you can be a moose. Feller Chevrolet, now offering a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. English is your complete home center, now offering a complete line of Carhartt clothing for men and women. And the First National Bank, helping you bring home more bacon. Dennis, you and I got to uh, visit with some of the crew from the First National Bank earlier this week at an event that uh, you had uh, earlier at the train station. Maybe we'll get in that during the halftime show some more as well. We'll try and keep it focused on football for the moment. We hope we have a good one lined up for you. I think we do. It's the Alta Vista Colonels taking on the Gretna Hawks. The captains are about to head out to midfield to do the coin toss. And we have another free moment here, Dennis, and the weather. Let's let's just throw the weather out there. Tabor and Mavens, the talented sophomore quarterback for the Gretna Hawks, seven, pa seven passing touchdowns, pardon me, on the season. Christian Gilbert on the other side for the Alta Vista Colonels has five touchdown passes. Does the wind and the rain maybe make the coaches a little cautious about taking to the skies with the pass? You are such a soothsayer, as always. We, as you start talking about that, the rain picks up, the <laughs> wind's picking up left to right, and and yes, it does. You you know, you're, you've you watched the growth and maturation in this defensive line for the Cardinals. They're going to get back there, rattle his cage, maybe pop that ball out. I think it is good equalizer. And I think we're getting ready to see the... Uh, no, we're not going to the National Anthem yet. We're going to a moment of silence for uh, one of our fallen uh, community leaders. But, you know, what, what do you think? I mean, it, we still <laughs> Gretna's running game's not exactly a, a B-team kind of running well, game right. either. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> point. The Gretna Hawks can run the football with the best of them as well. They don't have to throw the ball, although certainly both coaches wouldn't like to be one-sided and have to completely keep the ball on the ground. It's not a downpour by any means out here, but it's a pretty steady light rain, we'll call it, at the moment. I think the wind might be more of a factor with the uh, passing game than the actual precipitation, but we'll see what happens. The Colonels' secondary has been pretty good this season against the pass. They've got nine interceptions on the year. Jonte Gord and Shaheen Pinnell both with three apiece. So, they're capable of stopping the pass that way, and maybe some extra possessions would go a long way to helping the Colonels upset chances. I guess we'll call it an upset because on paper, and at least by the records anyway, we seem to think the Gretna Hawks would be favored. Um, I, I, think you, I think you would say that, especially two weeks ago what happened. don't mean to keep uh, revisiting that, but 39 to nothing. Uh, that's hard to overcome. But we saw our, our we saw our Colonels come back and, and play a really solid game, and you know when you throw it when through last week Michigan Michigan State number seven ranked Michigan mm -hmm. at home, uh, here comes the Spartans in on the road and, and beats them. So we are going to a national anthem, Kyle. Excellent point. Let's step aside for a moment. We'll be back with the kickoff before you know it between Alta Vista and Gretna. It's live on 105.5 KD Country. Your home is your biggest investment. It must be handled properly. Let the professionals at D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling handle your home issues. Donnie and his trained professional staff are ready at 434-841-1580. They can make sure your home or business HVA system is ready. Ready for the rest of the summer and ready for the upcoming fall and winter. Call D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling at 434-841-1580. That's 841-1580. D.L. Bryant is ready to protect your investment. What do basketball, choir, drama club, and marching band all have in common? They're all high school activities that offer learning opportunities not necessarily found in the classroom. They take up just a fraction of the typical Virginia high school's budget, and they go a long way to giving young people the tools they need to thrive. High school activities, they're more than extracurricular. They're extra important, too. Brought to you by English Construction Company with offices in Lynchburg. Whatever your truck, car, SUV needs are, Highview Motors GMC has it all from small to tall. New to pre-owned, offering more than just GMC sales. Highview Motors GMC provides 24-hour towing, full-service body shop, state inspection, transmissions, everything in between. Highview Motors GMC providing top quality service since 1961. Motors GMC. 
more live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. Yes. We are back here from Alta Vista High School. The Colonels have busted through their banner with the fog machine. It looks like the Gretna Hawks have done the same on the left side of the field. Good crowd out there at the spirit line for the Alta Vista Colonels, especially when you consider the somewhat indifferent weather. Maybe I'm overselling the rain out there. Maybe it's not that bad. We do have a good crowd. You see, about half of them have an umbrella out or at least a rain jacket on, so it's definitely doing something out there, Dennis. You, you do. Let's, let's tell our audience back home, this is uh, a typical day uh, for the Seattle, uh, Washington <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it's not exactly a uh, monsoon, but, you know, we did have a great spirit line down there. We had uh, the Lizard... Uh, Lizard Little League football team cheerleaders and future colonels out there on the sideline. The future colonels, spirit leaders as well too. So uh, I'm thinking we've got the ball. No, we're kicking off a typical. Let's give them the ball and defer to the second half that we've come to see for Coach Charnas. Look real quick. We've got a riverboat gambler tonight. He's got his troops motivated. He's got his boys ready to go. We've had a good pregame meal for him. They had fried chicken. I know the people right here beside me who, who helped serve it up for him. I'm going to tell the guys out there, out the is here to play. The Colonels are going to win tonight. Well said by Mr. Dennis Jarvis. Uh, and we hope Mr. and Mrs. Football fan tuned in around the world from border to border and all the ships at sea are excited for this ball game you know we got a lot of folks that listen on 1055 we've probably got just as many maybe more that listen on the kd country app or at kdcountry.com it does look like the kicker will be number 15 Jaden martin we thought we might see another kicker in there but you're right shaheen pinnell not kicking the football right now We'll see how Jaden Martin does. He'll make the run up and boot it away with the right foot. It's a swiver right down the middle. It'll get scooped up at the 25-yard line on the moisture-filled turf, and it's a short return back to the 33 or the 34-yard line. Hawks will start their first possession there. We're underway from Alta Vista High School, Thursday night football. Of course, there's an NFL game, and there's a big Major League Baseball playoff game. But feels like the spotlight's right here, doesn't it, Dennis? It does. It does. It's spectacular. Uh, the wind's blowing, the rain's falling, and we're ready to call some curl football. Here comes Tabor and Mavens. He's the talented sophomore quarterback for the Gretna Hawks. He wants to throw early, swings it out to Travis Hogan. Hogan is hit as he's catching the ball and doesn't gain much. That was a real nice gang tackle there by four or five Alta Vista Colonels. Looked like the first one out there was number 60, Tyler Reynolds. He was. Tyler Biggie Reynolds? Is, or he's got more than one nickname. Now, Tyler right? Biggie Reynolds. And uh, Aaron Triplett was in there with him, but a little freshman that could. I'm very pleased to call his number tonight. No gain on the first down pass completion. Gretna Hawks in the white road jerseys with the blue pants, blue helmet. Here's a running play. Trying to get outside on the sweep was Jalen Myers. He was not able to really turn the corner, and maybe the footing had something to do with that. He did pick up two and a half or three yards, however. It'll set up third and eight, we'll call it. Clock moving with 11.05 left to play in the English is your complete home center. First quarter. Colonels look like they're in man coverage in the secondary. Safety is John T. Gord. He's not very deep, and we have a penalty flag before the play gets started. Could be somebody was lined up in the neutral zone for the Colonels. Looks it like will go against the Alta Vista Colonels. Gretna's going to bring in some fresh personnel here. It'll still be third down. Make it third and about two and a half. More like just one and a half, actually, after the penalty. Good call. It was a real quick uh, jump in the neutral zone by one of the linemen for the Colonels. Maybe a power package in there for the Gretna Hawks now that the third down situation is a little bit closer. They're moving left to right from Dennis and I's perspective. They need two yards for a fresh set of downs. It's a quarterback keeper. Design run. Mavens was hit hard by Jonathan Montague right at the line to gain. Montague lets him know about it as he gets up off the pile. Stuck him hard right in the hip. But it is enough for a Gretna Hawk first down. Johnny was just a step or perhaps a half a yard too late getting to Mabins on the quarterback run. You know, the last three weeks we weren't, we didn't see uh, that kind of spring and his step and that kind of wrap up and hit that we're used to with Jonathan Montague. Good to see him back on the field, 100%. 
He's out on the defensive line now. Looks like he might be in coverage. Here comes another running play. Mabins keeps it, run, runs out of an arm tackle. Christian Gilbert is able to throw him down, although Gilbert never really got body-to-body -body contact. He just got enough of them with his arms and chopped the legs down. That's a 12-yard gain. Gretna on the move here, back-to-back -back first downs on their opening possession. 10-15 left to play in the first. Still 0-0 the score from Alta Vista High School. Kyle, two weeks ago we saw the same situation. Didn't know if the Cox were going to pass or going to run. And this is the same situation over again. Spread formation. Two receivers to each side. Babins wants to throw. Pocket collapses, and he will not get rid of the football. Daniel Triplett there to make the stop. Tyler Reynolds in on the stop as well. How about that from the freshman making a play there? And it drops Mabins and the Gretna Hawks back six yards. You know, we have been calling Daniel's name week after week. That defensive line is growing, maturing, and been in the uh, weight room, and it showed right there on, on that big DT kind of wrestling move from Daniel Triplett. Two wide receivers each side again. This time it's a running play. Myers has the football. The ball was exposed for a moment, but he was able to pull it back in his body, and he ended up with a 10-yard gain. Brought down by triplet again i believe and it looked like maybe reynolds in on that stop again as well also number 15 Jaden martin was in the area third and five another third down situation for the gretna hawks they're one for one so far pulling guard running play again no mavens keeps it nice ball fake looking for room and he finds some he's across the 20 still on his feet now thrown down inside the 15 at the 11 yard line good job by mavens with the patience that ends up being a 24 yard running play Looked like the Colonels had him stopped, found a little crack in the defense there, and was able to shrug off some tacklers. Mr. Mabin's young sophomore uh, signal caller, very impressive two weeks ago, continues that impression for me tonight in a positive way. Mabin's has the offense set and ready to go from the right hash mark. This ball's on the 11-yard line. He's going to run it himself again, going to the left. Now cuts it back inside. Got hit by a swarm of tacklers and brought down inside the 10. Football popped out, but the officials blow the whistle and say Mavens was down. It'll be a three-yard pickup, 8.30 left to play in the first quarter. Still no score. It's the opening drive of the ball game for the Gretna Hawks. You know, this is very hard de uh, offense to defense up. You just saw Mabins come down the alley. He had him a, a, a running mate. He's wingman. You didn't know if he was going to pitch or keep it and run himself. Myers is the wingman again. They hand it to him. He's in behind pulling guard inside the five. Lunges for the end zone. He's close. No signal. They say he stopped short. This ball has got to be on the one-yard line or closer. Jalen Myers with a first down run, but not a touchdown run. It'll be first and goal from the one-yard line with 8.05 left to play in the first quarter for the Gretna Hawks offense. Kyle, you're eagle eye six on that ball placement. That's right exactly where you said it was going to be. Thank you, Dennis. That makes me feel good, and I know the... Football fans like it as well. Quentin Tucker's in as a blocking back. Mavens is going to run it behind him. He's in the end zone, virtually untouched. Touchdown for the Gretna Hawks. They score on their opening possession. A nice, methodical, business-like drive down the field. A 66-yard drive down the field, capped off by the Tabron Mavens rushing touchdown. Or did they sneak Jordan Berger in there again on me? Was that Berger that scored the touchdown, Dennis? I believe it was. I think it was Jordan Berger. You I know, think you it mean, was number four, Jordan Berger. He snuck in at the quarterback spot again. You think about this last uh, two weeks ago. They caught you and I off guard. Uh, the all-star name roster we have with Gretna coming in, too, got us a little tongue-tied. But you were right. Yokesman-like, uh, business-like work from the Gretna offense there on this opening series. Extra point try on the way for the Gretna Hawks. That score came with 7.48 left to play in the first quarter. Kick looked like it got pulled to the left a bit, and it is good for the Hawks. So they take a 7-0 lead early. Alta Vista football for the first time in the ball game when you return to 105.5 KD Country. Bench and bench, funeral and cremation service. My family serving family since 1905. Service you can trust and prices that work for your family. During the moments in life that matter, you'll be able to feel the difference made by family ownership. Finch and Finch, family serving families since 1905. Finch and Finch, funeral and cremation service. A family serving families since 1905. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. 66-yard opening drive is capped off for the Gretna Hawks by Jordan Berger, a one-yard touchdown. 
He's another sophomore. They snuck him in there at the quarterback spot. It looks like they do that from time to time on those short yardage situations. Dennis, you said call it the Wild Hawk, call it whatever you want. It's a 7 nothing lead for the Hawks after their opening possession. Maurice Thompson converted the extra point, by the way. And now we'll see what the Altavista Colonels can do. They've got Jacob Adams and Shaheen Pinnell back deep, standing on the 10-yard line, ready to receive. Kick might get back there to Adams. It does. He steps up to the 14, catches the line drive. Running straight down the right hash mark, takes some contact at the 30, keeps moving across the 40, slung down there, and that's where the Colonels will operate from scrimmage for the first time. Pretty good starting field position. The starting field position hadn't been the problem this year for the Colonels. Dennis, we remark seemingly every game that Alta Vista's kickoff returns. They haven't broken a touchdown on the kickoff return, but they seem to usually end up with pretty good starting field position. You no, know, that average starting position for the Colonels is about 35, 38 yard line. We see it once again tonight. Now we got our offense out on the field. We got Jacob back at uh, Jacob back in the lineup. It's going to be interesting to watch our first possession tonight. We'll see how soon the Colonels try to get it to him. Gilbert has the offense set. Gord in motion. They hand to Shaheen Pinnell. He plows forward. Good hard running. Didn't even really try and make a cut. Just met the would-be tackler in the shoulder pads, and it's a four-yard pickup on first down. It'll bring up second and six. Clock moving with 7.25 left to play, and the English is your complete home center first quarter. When Shaheem runs the ball, the opposing team better tackle low, tackle high, and wrap up because that first hit, Shaheem rolls off and gets another two, maybe three yards sometimes on a carry. He's stationed off the quarterback Gilbert's left hip. This time Christian keeps it. Now it's an option pitch over to Jonte Gord. Gord is able to avoid a big hit from the oncoming Taylor Miller, but Miller got enough of Gord in the feet there to bring him down. He's close to a first down. He vaulted across the 50-yard line there, and the first down marker is resting in between the 50 and the 49. Looks like they're going to call it third and very short, and the official will stop play now. He wants to maybe take a look at this with a measurement. Dennis, that gives us time to talk about English's, your complete home center. They are our quarter sponsor, and your home for Carhartt clothing for men and women. Now, wouldn't the Carhartt be perfect right now with the windy and wet conditions. You wouldn't even know it was raining out there with a Carhartt jacket. No, you wouldn't. And my Carhartt pants I have from there would feel a little better now than these uh, dungarees I have on. <laughs> it was enough for an Alta Vista first down. They did not measure. The official just sort of eyeballed it. So it's a fresh set of downs. Left hash mark. Colonels in the home. Black jersey. Black pants. Orange and white piping down the sides. Hawks show blitz. They give it to Pinnell. He breaks free. Tried to spin out of a Shin high tackle, and he was able to pick up a nice chunk there. Eight yards, we'll say, on first down. He was really just a spin move away from breaking the touchdown. Real quick, Kyle, let's go back to the, the first down pickup. We were running the alley on an option. Uh, Gilbert passes, uh, pitches the ball out to Jonte Gord. Weeks ago, we would have had a fumble, or a, a Mr. Gilbert wouldn't have been able to, to pitch the ball right. This is a really revved-up offense running real fast. Sure is. Colonels in the shotgun formation. One running back, two wing backs, a wide out to each side. Man in motion. They're going to hand to Shaheen Pinnell. Flags come out. Somebody moved early for the Alta Vista Colonels offense. It'll back up out to Vista five yards. We'll say it's second and eight now with 5.57 left to play in the first quarter. It's a 7-0 to zero Gretna Hawk lead. Officially, it's a false start on the Alta Vista Colonels. It looked like it was number 21, Tyler Gord, in motion, but I think he was supposed to be in motion. I don't think that's who the penalty was on. No, I don't either. But let's talk about real quick the uh, the intensity and enthusiasm, the Christmas of the play calling, the Christmas of the execution of the Colonel offense uncharacteristic of what we saw two weeks ago in an opening position for us. Shotgun formation again. Wings to each side. They put Adams in motion. They fake it to Pinnell. Option play. Gilbert tries to pitch it to Adams but was unable to get out of the grasp of the oncoming Gretna Hawks defense and their tacklers. Good job by the Hawks in the white jerseys to swarm. Gilbert wanted to pitch the ball but just never could get his arms free and extend the pigskin out. It'll make it third and 11 now or third and at least a long 10. 5-13 left to play in the first quarter. Hawks up 7 nothing. That was like Mr. Gilbert was the wanted man in the trio posse was coming through, the Hawks, and there was just nowhere for him to run or pitch the ball there, Kyle. Looked like big number 52. Oh, gosh. Got to check that roster again and find out who number 52 is. Man in motion is Jacob Adams. Colonels thought the Hawks jumped. 
They end up running the play anyway and hand it off to Shaheem Pinnell. He follows the left guard for five yards. It's not enough for a first down, but it certainly makes it close enough to where you could think about going for it on fourth down. It's fourth and five. Colonels need to get just past the 40-yard line. You know those uh, Gretna Hawks, uh, they, they catch us off guard. Corlin Witcher is number 52, that uh, outside linebacker. Yes, you're right. He wears a different number here on the road. The Colonels are going for it on fourth and six now. Look like a hawk jumped offside again. No, they're not going for it. Pinnell's going to punt it away. Had us fooled. It's a very good kick that might stop on the one-yard line. Oh, no. Oh. It just barely trickles into the end zone. Great job by the Colonels to disguise the punt as they often do this year. And really a kick from Shaheen Pinnell on the punt that ended up being almost very good. It still will buy the Colonels defense some yardage, yardage and some room to work. Gretna will operate from the 20-yard line after the touchback. You know, Kyle, let's go back to the first possession for Gretna. You know, it was just a little inerrant mistake there. I told you in the timeout. We had them third and six. Uh, we got off sides, gave them momentum, we picked up the first down. We play solid fundamentals. This is going to be a different game this time. Man in motion for the Gretna Hawks is Hogan. Hogan turns it up. He's going Ooh. right into the chest of Christian Gilbert. Gilbert and Hogan end up in sort of a wrestling match there. And he ends up going to the turf around the line of scrimmage. I think he'll get positive yardage there on the forward progress. That was Dominic Meeks, pardon me, on the carry that time. You know, Christian's wrapping up at a solid buck 80. Uh, he, he played well above his weight class on that tackle, Kyle. Two receivers to each side again. Mabins wants to throw, sprinting out to the left. That's the wide side of the field. Now angle back to the middle. Avoids Christian Gilbert at the first shot and then Gilbert takes him down by the shoulder pads about two yards past the line of scrimmage there was a flag that came out probably a hold on the Gretna offensive line it is it'll back him up and erase the two yard gain as well it's a seven to zero Gretna Hawk advantage at the moment 332 left to play in the English's first quarter a really good play on special teams from our Colonels got them on the 20 yard line now an uncharacteristic mistake early by this Hawk team it's gonna back them up make us a second and 11 and this weather tonight that passing game is not gonna be as open as it was for Gretna two weeks ago I agree it's it, it, it harder to hold on to the ball and it's harder for those receivers to make those good sharp cuts in the route running of course, seemingly it should be harder for the defense to cut as well. Three wide receivers to the right side of the field. That's the wide side for the Gretna Hawks. Second and 20 now, or at least second and 19. Mavens wants to throw. Looks over the middle. It's complete to Meeks. Meeks cannot run out of the gang tackling Alta Vista defense. Colonels have a full six black jerseys unpiling off of Meeks after the catch that gets Gretna to the 20-yard line. That's about the original line of scrimmage. Oh, one referee's got a much better spot than where the football is. Yeah, now they'll move it up just a little bit. Third and 11, we'll say, on the way for the Hawks offense. 2.44 left to play in the first quarter. 7-0, the Gretna lead. They come into the ball game, 5-1, just a lone loss last week to the William Campbell Generals. Passing play again. Oh. Maben swings it out to the running back, releasing out of the backfield. He's headed to the far sideline. Now he turns back inside, met by some Colonel resistance short of the first down marker. He looks to be two or three yards short of the first down stick. That might bring up a Gretna punting situation here on fourth and two. On the crease out on the corner, Jacob Adams wrapped him up. I think that was a missed holding call. Uh, in the, uh, the Hawk backfield there. Don't mean to be negative on the rest, but they really missed one. Hawks are going for it on fourth and two. They're in their own territory here from their own 28-yard line. Now a timeout comes out. Cole Simpson may be going to second-guess himself. We'll see. We'll take the timeout, too. 158 left to play in the first quarter. Hawks up 7-0, to zero, but Gretna's got a fourth down on the way. When you return, high school football on KD Country. Have you looked at your business banking fees lately? I'm Sean Stone with First National Bank, and we have the best business accounts which offer serious savings for your company. We have a full menu of business products from checking accounts and remote deposit capture to online banking. And we have a local merchant card representative who will customize services just for your business. So let First National Bank prepare an analysis of your current activity and show how we will reduce your banking fees. First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. 
Well, it seems that Cole Simpson and the Gretna coaching staff has changed their mind. They're not going to go for it here. They're in a punting formation. I suppose they could still fake the punt, Dennis, but the snap does go back to the punter. He gets it away. Colonel's crashed hard and nearly got it blocked. It's fielded by Jacob Adams at the 45. Unable to run out of an ankle tackle, he was just getting himself into second and third gear there, and the Hawks converging and crashing hard. Jalen Myers will get credit for the stop there, and then, you know, Jacob still would have had to go 55 yards, but getting Adams stopped before he gets started is key there, and the Hawks did that on the punt coverage. Alta Vista will take over. Good field position again, their own 47-yard line. You know, the uh, Alta Vista wrecking crew was there on special teams. Three big boys right back in that uh, backfield was in the punter's face. He's going to have a nightmare or two tonight about those guys coming after him. Christian Gilbert has the offense set. The ball resting just right of center as the Colonels working south to north from our perspective. Inside running play to give it to Shaheen Pinnell. Not a whole lot there. Swallowed up by the Gretna defensive line. Looked like number 74, Lamontavius Jefferson, another one of those talented sophomores, might have been the key man on the stop there for Gretna. And I'm going to tell you, you're talented in remembering how to call these names on this all-star Gretna roster tonight, too. It does seem like an all-star roster, doesn't it? And they're all young. Better get used to it. Yes, sir. Wing back to each side, wide out to each side for the Alta Vista offense. The running back is left. They put Jonte Gord in motion. They give the ball to Shaheen Pinnell. It almost looked like Christian Gilbert wanted to keep it. He seemed shocked that Pinnell took the ball with him just off right guard. It is a positive running play, though. It ends up being a two-yard pickup. Call it third and seven now for the Alta Vista offense. Ball resting on the 50-yard line with 52 seconds left to play. In the English is your complete home center first quarter. This would be key if the Alta Vista Colonels could get a first down here. It's just their second possession of the ball game. They trail 7-0 to the Gretna Hawks. Kyle, we're going to go a little bit of speed. We just brought Aubrey Johnson in. Put out on the slot, and you got uh, Jacob back on the other side. We're going fast and quick here. Gord in motion from right to left. Option play. They pitch it to Jonte Gord. Got nailed at the 47-yard line and thrown backwards for a two-yard loss. Good, solid open field tackling from Talon Miller. Another sophomore. that will bring up fourth and nine for the Alta Vista Colonels. Probably looking at another punt after the option play loses yards on third down. Kyle, you can't emphasize the word sophomore enough when you're calling a Gretna game. They've got 15 sophomores, 11 juniors, and only six seniors on this team. That has really impressed us being 5-1 and in uh, uh, Second time we've seen them two weeks. It looks like we're going to take a timeout, or did uh, Gretna kind of question this? You yeah. Know, you know, fourth and ten, I don't think we're going to fake it. No, it's the end of the first quarter, oh. and we will go to the <laughs> second quarter with a bewildered Dennis Jarvis and probably more than just him. It's a 7-0 to zero Gretna Hawk lead. We're back with the second quarter in just a moment on 105.5 KD Country. Stay cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling on the ready to keep you comfortable year-round. Locally owned and operated, just a call away with over 20 years experience. Licensed and bonded, Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling, specializing in heating, air, plumbing, and electrical, any season, any time. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling, keeping you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Give them a call today. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling, Gretna. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. I'm Kyle. He is Dennis. And sometimes the end of the quarter does sneak up on you. And the quarter really did fly by, Mr. Jarvis. Ball stayed on the ground a lot. Didn't go out of bounds much. Don't think there was any incomplete passes. So the first quarter wrapped up in pretty quick fashion. Alta Vista looks like they're going to punt it away here on 4th and 10. Football resting on their own 47-yard line. Yes, you're right, and I did get caught off guard. I got all caught up in the fact that we're moving more efficiently than the Colonels are. We're playing crisper. We're playing with a sense of uh, uh, a purpose, and uh, it caught me off guard there. But we're getting ready to punt the ball. Officials look like they're ready to let him go here. Shaheen Pinnell is the deep man on the punt. He's only about nine yards deep. Steps into the right-footed kick, hangs it up very high. Look at Jacob Adams down to cover nicely, and he'll let it, let it take the Alta Vista bounce. Now he'll stop it once it starts rolling the other direction. Hawks will operate on their third possession of the ball game from their own 26-yard line. So I'd call that another successful Shaheen Pinnell punt. Let's see 
what the Gretna offense has in store on their third try from scrimmage and see what the Alta Vista Colonel defense can do. They forced a Gretna punt last time, and of course the Hawks scoring on their first possession of the ball game. A Jordan Berger one-yard touchdown run that capped off a 66-yard opening drive. Kyle, two weeks ago, we didn't make a punt until the second half. Design quarterback run. Mavens That's keeps up. it going off right tackle, and he is thrown backwards by the aggressive Daniel Triplett with the takedown. It's always nice when the defender stays on his feet, but the, t <laughs> but the ball carrier gets thrown down to the ground. It almost looked like a professional wrestling sort of a takedown, and it ends up being little gain for the Hawks on first down. They'll operate from the far hash mark. Wide side of the field is the left. They're in the road white jerseys with the blue pants. Really reminiscent of Dan River last week, except you don't see much red in the Colonel's jersey like the Wildcats had. Jalen Miller on the running play. Off left tackle, angling back to the middle. Hit hard and dropped at the 45-yard line. But it's a big pickup, a 24-yard scamper for Jalen Miller. And the Gretna Hawks are on the move here in the early stages of the second quarter. Uh, Kyle, that's Jalen Myers. Mm, number you're 12. right. You're right. And, Pardon and, you know, me. He just turned that speed on a little bit. Got a, a crease right between the, the, the secondary, the Colonels, and turned it on real quick. Yeah, I beg your pardon. It was oh. Myers. Dalen Miller is another talented Gretna Hawk, but I beg your pardon on that one. Here's another running play on first down for the Hawks. They're going up the middle in between the tackles again for eight yards. Make it second and two with a moving clock. 10.44 left to play. In the English is your complete home center second quarter. Kyle, away from the ball, Jalen Miller... Uh, uh, not See, Jalen you, Miller. You I, did it, too. Yeah, well, <laughs> Keyshawn Moon got pancake blocked by one of the Gretna offensive linemen, and I wish they could have called his name. Maben's going to hand the ball off again on second and short. Colonel Swarm, but I think the Hawks have enough for a first down. I believe it was Jalen Myers on the carry again, and I'm going to have to make sure I don't screw that up. Jalen Myers is number 12. He is a talented running back with six rushing touchdowns this year for Gretna. Dalen Miller is also a running back, and go figure, also a sophomore like most of the Gretna Hawks. If there was a 10th grade league, the Hawks would just dominate that. Passing play floated in the slot there, and it ends up hitting the ground. It was closer to Jacob Adams and Christian Gilbert than any of the Gretna Hawk receivers, and maybe just a miscommunication on the route there as Mavens really just threw it to nobody. Well, you know, we, we saw a couple of weeks ago uh, when the weather's not playing a factor, the ball slick. The ground's wet. Uh, I think it slipped out of the, the Hawks quarterback's hands. Uh, we're lucky. There was about two yards in between the, the defenders and the Skyhawk. Uh, the Skyhawk. The Hawk receiver. I like the Skyhawk though, especially if you pass the ball a lot. They hand off to Jalen Myers again. He's pinballing off the Alta Vista defensive line. His O line got a really nice surge out front. I mean, you see all the offensive linemen about five, six yards down the field. No stalemates there. Hawks won that battle even though Myers was only able to pick up three yards. It'll make it third and seven here. Another big third down for the Alta Vista defense. Let's see if the Colonel's D can force Gretna back and maybe force him to think about going for it on a fourth down situation. Kyle, like, uh, like the assertive play of the Colonel's defense thus far. Hawks football, middle of the field, running play. Mabin's taken down from behind by Tyler Gord. Tyler Gord just run him down, ran him down, pardon me. The play was a little slow developing, and Gord, in full sprint, ran down Tabor and Mabins, threw him back for a loss of two. Here comes fourth down and eight for the Gretna offense. Looks like they're going for it. 9-10 left to play in the first half. It's a 7-0 Gretna Hawk lead. Let's see what the Colonels have in store on fourth down defensively, Dennis. A lot more fuel in the tank than we had two weeks ago. Two receivers each side. Maven sprints out, throws right. Got a man incomplete. He did have a man open, but the pass sailed high. Perhaps that moisture on the football that, football that we discussed, and it'll be a turnover on downs. The Alta Vista Colonels defense holding strong there on third and fourth down. Talk about a big play from Tyler Gord for Alta Vista on the third down tackle for a loss. Kyle, back-to-back -back possessions for the Colonels defense, back-to-back -back possessions, turnover on downs for uh, Gretna. Very pleased. We didn't see this assertiveness. We didn't see this kind of uh, composure from the Road Warriors when uh, our Colonels went down 29 two weeks ago. The hometown crowd is making a difference. Just under nine minutes to play here in the second quarter, and it is a pretty big crowd when you consider the weather. Hand off to Shaheen Pinnell. Had a pretty good hole to run through, but there was a Hawk tackler just down on all fours, and Pinnell 
couldn't dodge him. That looked like big number 78, Brandon Sexton, that made the stop for the Gretna Hawks. It ends up a two-yard gain for the Alta Vista offense. Gretna on top, 7-0. to zero. 8.30 left to play in the English is your complete home center. Second quarter. And certainly, Dennis, this is an improvement as far as the energy level and the firepower from Alta Vista. Doing a great job in the early stages of this ball game, even though they trail by seven. Offense needs to get going, though. They hand it Pinnell again. Tried to get in behind the pulling lineman going from left to right. Was able to gain two and a half or three yards. It'll set up third and five for Alta Vista's offense. Third and four actually is a little bit more like it. They need to get to the 39-yard line for a fresh set of downs. They're in their own field territory here on their third possession of the game. It kind of looks like the... Uh defensive lineman for uh, Gretna, Eli Bond, getting up a little gimpy. Uh, he had been in on a couple of tackles for Shaheem, and I wouldn't want to be hit by Shaheem Parnell. Looks like it hurt him. No, he's a stout kid, and he moves pretty fast, too. They're going to hand it to him one more time. He stumbled as he was going through the hole, lunged the football out, and according to the officials, he has enough for a Alta Vista first down. Good job by Pinnell to really keep the play alive, even though he was stumbling, got tripped up by a Gretna Hawk defender that went low, lunged the football out at the end of the play and picked up the necessary yardage. First and 10 for the Alta Vista offense, just inside the near right hash mark, moving left to right in this second quarter. They've got the home jerseys, the black jerseys this time, with the black pants to go along with the black helmet. They give it to Pinnell again four times in a row, and he's just going to try and bulldoze his way up the middle this time. Not a bad push from the Alta Vista offensive line. Clearly, this is a strategy here by Mike Sharnas to try and get Pinnell some touches and get him between the tackles and sort of go smash, smash mouth football. Well, you, when you're averaging, when your big guy's averaging 4.9 yards a carry, and we've talked earlier about if you're going to tackle someone like Shaheem, hit him high, hit him low, or wrap up, uh, he's showing superiority tonight, and the offensive line for the Colonels is showing we, we're not going to break this time. I think they'll give it to him five times in a row. We'll see. No, Gilbert's going to keep it himself this time. He bounces around the inside there. That's some rugged smash mouth football as Gilbert spins around, twisting across the 49-yard line. He's about a yard short of the first down, maybe less than a yard, probably half a yard. So we'll say third and half a yard coming up for the Alta Vista offense with 6.18 left to play in the half. Trailing by seven, third possession of the ball game. First two ended in punts. Let's see if they can keep this one going, Mr. Jarvis. It's shotgun formation again, like always for Alta Vista. They hand it Pinnell. He hits the hole with a full head of steam, still driving, just bullying his way across the 45-yard line. You can tell Pinnell is running with some aggressiveness and some vigor. He'll come out for a much-needed rest. I think that was five carries and six plays for the senior, Shaheem Pinnell. I think you're right, and we should have a theme song for each quarter right now. This is <laughs> Pinball Wizard by The Who, because you said that earlier, Christian's bouncing off like a pinball, Shaheem's bouncing off like a pinball. Well, let's just say the big wrecking ball's back there, too. Mm. What an impressive drive by the Colonels this time out on the ball. First and ten for Alta Vista, their first time inside Gretna Field territory. They hand off to another senior, Jonathan Montague, who does some hard-nosed running off tackle. Five-yard pickup for the senior Jonathan Montague. 5.29 left to play in the half. 7-0, to zero, the Gretna lead, but the Alta Vista Colonels putting together their best drive of the ball game. Kyle, I would say one of the best drives we've seen in the last three weeks. Shotgun formation again. The formation hasn't changed. It's a wide out to each side and a wing back to each side. They're in between the hash marks here. They hand it to Jonathan Montague again. Looked like he was going to get thrown backwards, but then the second effort and the third effort... Nets Johnny a four-yard gain. Good sportsmanship there at the end of the play as he and Keynes Moon tap each other on the helmet and congratulate each other on a good play. Third and inches again for the Alta Vista offense. They just had this moments ago. They picked up the last one with an inside running play with Shaheen Pinnell. Let's see if they go the same play, just with a different back this time maybe. Jonathan Montague in there, a full yard behind Christian Gilbert. Wingbacks to each side, wideouts to each side. Gretna defense not really showing blitz. 
two linebackers, two deep safeties. They do give it to Jonathan Montague, lowers the shoulders and the head, and does plow forward for an Alta Vista first down. This is old school football right here, Dennis. Uh, old school football and kernel football we were accustomed to in the first two weeks. Jonathan Montague is back healthy. He got hurt in that uh, you know road game we had against the Stanton River Hawks. And, uh, you know, it's, it's good, the Stanton River Eagles, rather. It's great to see him back running with a reckless abandon. They put Jonte Gord in motion. They give it to Shaheen Pinnell, who's back in the ball game. Second effort again. He had two Gretna Hawks draped on his back, but somehow wasn't even giving any ground, and he actually inched the ball forward for another half a yard. Kyle, this is one of those type of drives, like you said, old school. Power up the middle, power up the middle, bust it back outside to the left, uh, clock management. And we're ca I think we're seeing the Gretna is a little tired. Gretna defense is a little frustrated as well, too. The defense for Gretna does appear to be on their heels a little bit. First time we've seen that in our two looks at the Gretna Hawks. And I like that you mentioned the ball control and the time management. The Gretna offense is not out there working while this long drive goes on. Option play to the left. Gilbert had some room to run, but a good open field tackle performed by number 30, Bryant Davis, lunged and got Christian Gilbert low. It looked like Gilbert had eyes on getting at least inside the 20, but he stopped Gilbert on the 27-yard line. Colonels need to pick up two and a half or three for the first down, third down. I think that faked even some of the right side of the Gretna defensive line. Thought that Shaheem had the ball, thought he had him locked up, and Christian breaks the outside. It was a really nice play. Third and three for the Alta Vista offense. Far hash mark. They need to get to the 24-yard line. They hand to Pinnell. Pinnell nearly scooted free. He's kind of kicking himself because he thought he had the end zone there. Slip making a cut. It is a first down, though. Call it a four- or five-yard pickup for Shaheen Pinnell. The chains move again, and Alta Vista putting together a very consistent, methodical drive. It's three yards and not a cloud of dust on this misty night, but three yards and some rain bouncing off the Bermuda turf. Here comes the Colonels again. Same formation, a wing back to each side. The wing in motion is Jacob Adams. They'll run the option with him. They pitch it to Adams. He catches on the 25. He's across the 15 at the end of 10. Touchdown, Jacob Adams. We didn't see Mr. Adams last week. We hadn't seen him carry the ball yet. They finally pitch it to him, and he makes good on the explosive athletic ability there. The option play to the left. Good job by Christian Gilbert to deliver a perfect pitch. Touchdown, Jacob Adams. He's in from 23 yards out. 7-6 to six is our score at the moment. Kyle, this is uh, uncharacteristic of a Alta Vista team the last three weeks. Ball control, no penalties, no mistakes, and a very methodical workman's-like progression down the field. Here's the new kicker that Mr. Jarvis mentioned. It's Joel Ruiz Cufsey. The snap is not good, and Adams is going to take off. He's going to try and throw the football, but now he's pinned backwards at the 19-yard line. He's down. The two-point conversion slash extra point is no good, so the Colonels will trail by one. It's 7-6, to six, the Gretna Hawk lead after a very good Alta Vista drive. Gretna football on the way when you return. 2.25 left to play in the first half on 105.5 KD Country. Fun times are waiting for you at El Cazador, Alta Vista's oldest Mexican restaurant. Relax in comfort with daily food and drink specials, Mexican and American foods, and a children's menu too. Call for takeout or go online to elcazadorva.com. El Cazador is a proud supporter of community activities like high school sports and the Y. El Cazador is open 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. Stop by before or after the game. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Well, certainly the best Alta Vista Colonel drive in recent memory, and perhaps the best of the season gets Alta Vista within one. I think they were trying to kick the extra point, Dennis, but the snap was off the mark. Jacob Adams tried to take off and make something out of nothing, but the Hawks' defense got him before he could, and that's where we stand. Seven to six, the Gretna lead. Man, what a drive. What a very good, methodical drive. No passes. 74-yard drive capped off with the Jacob Adams rushing TD. Nice to see Adams back. It's his eighth touchdown of the season. 
Kick mishandled for a moment at the 10-yard line, but the Gretna Hawks have it back. Return man starting up the middle. Now he's on the right hash mark, trying to break free. The Colonels will run him down at the 45-yard line. Oh, nearly a touchdown there for number eight, Dalen Miller. He had trouble picking up the football initially, but once he got it in his hands, Dennis, he was gone and nearly gone all the way. But me, big Mr. Right, uh, right, spa right Space at the right time, Jonte Gord, said you're not going to run this ball back at English Field under Thursday Night Lights if I have anything to do with it. Jonte Gord does seem to make a lot of big plays, a lot of touchdown-saving type of plays. He's back there at the safety spot now. Here's the handoff to Jalen Myers. Myers sifting his way through the defense. Not much shake and bake, straight ahead running. He tried to round his running route off and turn it back towards the middle. Seven-yard pickup on first down. Another good hole to run through, good push from the Gretna offensive line. Under two minutes to play in the first half, 7-6, to six, the one-point Gretna lead. I think, I think you make a good point about the running style of Gretna. I'll say it in a second. Mayburn's going to run up the middle. He does dance a bit this time and is able to avoid a couple oncoming Alta Vista linebackers. First down yardage gained. Sticks move. Clock stops momentarily for them to reset. 141 left to play in the half. Gretna has two timeouts at their disposal. Alta Vista still with all three. You know, Kyle, it depends on who touches the ball for Gretna. It's either a finesse kind of jazzy move or big, big power run. Mayburn's good pocket. Lofts it over the middle. The pass is short. The pass is incomplete. He was looking for number seven, Dominic Meeks. Pass was well underthrown, and as Meeks tried to come back and get it, the feet just flew out from under him. And there you see an instance where the rain on the ground does affect play a little bit. I think on a dry turf, Meeks may have been able to come back and get that ball. May have. You might have to go to a deeper kind of cleat or a smaller cleat to start this second half if this rain comes back. Second and ten, running play. They give to Myers. He's working left to right hit after a short game. Followed the pulling lineman. He got stopped by Tyler Gord. Looked like Jonathan Montague was in the area. Third down on the way for the Gretna Hawks. 115 left to play in the half and a one-point advantage. You know, Kyle, this is uh, inherently different than two weeks ago. Uh, the Colonels are playing solid. They're playing fundamental football. Not backing down. Mavens, quarterback keeper, up the middle, met with some stiff resistance. He's thrown backwards. He'll get forward progress. Will probably net him about one yard. Jonathan Montague letting everybody know he was the man that met Mavens. Timeout on the field for the Gretna Hawks. They've got fourth down on the way when you return. Less than one minute to play in the half. It's a one-point Gretna lead on 105.5 KD Country. To become a Moose is an awesome feeling. You just can't belong to a better organization. I was born and raised in a Moose, and I'll be a Moose the rest of my life. My son is a Moose. We're three-generation Moose Loggers. That's, that's how it is with us. I hope everybody else that can join and become a member, you need to do it. You need to see what, what, it, what it does for us. Why I belong to the Moose. For friendship, for the children, and most of all for the seniors. What are you waiting for? Stop by the Moose Family Center in Alta Vista to learn more about how you can be a moose. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. The Alta Vista defense has forced another fourth down for the Gretna Hawks offense. Gretna 0 for 1 on fourth down so far this ball game. They've got three wide receivers to the left side of the field. That's the wide side. They need to pick up a full two yards here. 54 seconds left to play in the half. Mavens barks at the snap count. A Gretna receiver moved early, but so did an Alta Vista defender. The officials are going to call this against the Gretna Hawks. It'll back them up five yards. And some Colonel fans breathing a sigh of relief. False start there on the offense makes it fourth and eight. Change your play call now, maybe, Mr. Jarvis? That's what I was getting ready to say. Not so fast, my friend. You know, what you're doing, you're backing them up five yards. You're giving a little more work for this signal caller from Gretna to work with. Give it the weather's a, a situation they're going to have to run because that ball's not going to come out of the hands the way he wants it to. He is going to pass here. Straight three-step drop. Maven stands tall. Now he runs Ooh. out of the pocket. Nice juke move to get free, and he lofts it deep to the end zone, but the ball is incomplete. Again, another ball that was slightly off target. Maven's throwing accuracy not as good tonight as a couple weeks ago, and I think the weather has something to do with it. And you do have to tip your cap to the hard rush from Alta Vista, maybe forced Mavens to do something he wasn't quite comfortable with. You know, we've seen a lot of wonderful football players this year in Central Virginia. This young man, Mavens, a signal caller, 
great feet action, rolled back out to his right, passing back across his body. Uh, really was a little high, but to a Gretna wide receiver, would if that been thrown on target, would have been a Gretna touchdown. He broke free from the coverage. Colonels have a man in motion. They hand it to Shaheen Pinnell. Up the middle running. This time, I don't think he even got back to the line of scrimmage. Down to 40 seconds left to play in the half. I don't think either team's going to use a timeout unless maybe the Colonels were to throw it on second down here and stop the clock with an incomplete pass. Maybe then you might think about it. But clock running down to 25 seconds left in the English's second quarter. It's a one-point Gretna Hawk lead. Colonels defense coming to life on the last last two drives, stopping Gretna inside the Alta Vista 30. Here comes second and nine for the Colonels. Running play again. Pinnell behind the lineman, couldn't escape the grasp of the rushing defensive end. Two-yard pickup for Alta Vista. Clock down to three seconds, down to two. They're not going to call a timeout, so we will go to halftime with the identical score we had last week, Mr. Jarvis. Colonels trailing by one, seven to six, the Gretna Hawk lead. The Tuscan Italian Grill halftime show is on the way when you return to 105.5 KD Country. A short drive will save you money. This is Greg Walker with Feller Chevrolet. Our new 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty has many customers buy from us instead of competition. It covers any vehicle purchased up to 10 years old with less than 150,000 miles, new or used. With our three-day money-back guarantee, you can buy with confidence. Where else can you get great prices, good selection, three-day money-back guarantee, and a warranty that gives you 10 years of protection? Come see us. You'll be glad you did. Feller Chevrolet. The game is brought to you by these members of the Katy Country Sports Club. Radio Shack and Crystal Bay Pools, serving your area since 1989 for swimming pool installations, chemicals, liners, and more. El Cerrito, throw on a sombrero, shake your maracas, it's El Cerrito time. Authentic Mexican cuisine, only El Cerrito can serve up. One Stop Mart, Main Street, Alta Vista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken is kicking. McDonald's of Alta Vista, proud supporter of the Alta Vista Colonels. Stop by or drive through before or after the game. The Dairy Freeze, with hot dogs, burgers, fries, and of course, ice cream. They're doing it right at the Freeze on Main Street, Alta Vista. Old Dominion Insurance, see Kim and Gil, your Erie insurance agents on Main Street, Gretna, next to Tyler Flower Shop. Thanks for sponsoring tonight's broadcast on 105.5 KD Country. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. The Tuscan Italian Grill halftime show is here. The Alta Vista marching band walking out to midfield to do their thing. It's a one-point Gretna Hawk lead, 7-6. Jordan Berger took it in from one yard out on Gretna's opening possession of the ball game. Since then, it was a punt, then back-to-back -back turnover on downs where the Alta Vista defense made some nice stops on third and fourth down. Colonel scored on their third possession of the ball game, a Jacob Adams 23-yard rushing touchdown. Dennis, deja vu all over again. It's a 7-6 to six ball game at halftime. Colonel's trail by one. Deja vu all over again. Very good call, deja vu. However, didn't you just say that? Yeah, well, let's, go, <laughs> let's go back two weeks ago. This same scenario two weeks ago, scores 20 to nothing, mm -hmm. Gretna. And we didn't see a Colonel first down in the first half. We didn't see uh, three straight possessions for the home Gretna Hawks. It'd be two stops and a punt. We didn't call anybody's number positively for the Alta Vista Colonels. There must be something in the air. It's a cool autumn, typical October night, and a great crowd. And this is an inherently different team than we've seen in the last three weeks. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I don't think we're going to see uh, we get the ball back to start the third quarter, and I don't think it's a repeat of last week with three straight possessions and three straight punts by the Cardinals, four straight punts rather. I think we're going to see just a lot of the same. The guys are just fired up. Everybody feels it, even up here. Yes, sometimes it's hard to put your finger on what the exact reason is why a team plays better or worse on a given night, but I think you're right. I think the Alta Vista Colonels fired up. They've got some energy. They've got some life. Maybe it's the rematch with the Gretna Hawks. Maybe it's the uh, home crowd. Who knows? Sometimes the rain can even get you pumped up. Some teams use that to their advantage and say, hey, we like it when it's wet and nasty outside. We practice in this stuff. So it could be any number of things, but right now, 
Alta Vista, probably right where they want to be, trailing by at 1.7 to 6. The Hawks, I don't think Coach Cole Simpson and his staff are freaking out over there on their sideline. Probably feel like they have some missed opportunities. I don't think Gretna's playing awful. They had the two turnover on downs, but other than that, they've taken care of the football, and certainly their defense has done their job. They've only allowed one Alta Vista touchdown. They made the Colonels earn their way all the way down the field with that 74-yard drive. Um, so overall, it's a good football game, Dennis, and probably what we expected coming in. A uh, very well-balanced game on both sides. Uh, you know, uh, all three phases of the game. We see uh, Gretna doesn't make a mistake on the extra point this, uh, you know, on special teams like they, we saw last week we heard about or saw two weeks ago. Uh, we had a, a kind of a miss gaff, kind of a miscue on uh, kick coverage and missing an extra point. Uh, I'll say the three issues that have made a difference right now in this game was the offsides uh, the Colonels gave up when it was third and six, mm -hmm. uh, that missed tackle up here on the uh, kickoff return, and just uh, it, the rain is playing a factor for us. But, you know, what got us fired up for our game call tonight? Oh, what the did we do? Italian grill. Thank you for making that segue. Let's step aside real quick. Let me collect my thoughts. I wrote some notes down about that meal. You just you saw me taking notes yes, across sir. the table, didn't you? I'll go refer to those, and we'll talk about the Tuscan Italian Grill. It's going to be a blast. We're already having a good time here on Thursday night football. Oh, we'll tell you what the Bees and the Red Devils are up to in Rustburg, by the way. Good ball game up there as well. Back with more in just a moment. It's the Tuscan Italian Grill halftime show. Gretna leading at half, 7-6 over the Alta Vista Colonels on 105.5 KD Country. English is so much more. English is more than a hardware store. English is. My friends may call me the perfectionist, but at English's Building Supply, my neighborhood Davis paint dealer, they greet me by name. You see, I like to get things done exactly right, especially when it comes to my many painting projects. So I'm at English's Building Supply a lot, whether it's mixing the perfect Davis paint for my project or offering great incentives. They do business just the way I like it. Perfectly. English is on North Main Street, Alta Vista. Napa know how. When you purchase a set of Napa brake pads and rotors, you get a discount code from Fanatics.com worth up to $50 towards your favorite sports gear. While Napa can't help your team reach the promised land, we can help make sure your car will. Great brakes, great price, great fan gear. That's Napa know how. Napa know how. Offer expires September 30th, 2017. Napa Auto Parts, Main Street, Alta Vista, across from Feller Chevrolet. Thinking of starting a business or expanding your company? Think about choosing Alta Vista as your location to invest and grow. Alta Vista offers low utility cost, broadband internet, US 29 access, and an attractive quality of life. You'll score big just like the Colonels when you invest in Alta Vista. Huddle up with the Alta Vista Office of Economic Development at Alta Vista Town Hall. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. Your home for 55 years of award-winning high school sports coverage. It's 105.5 KD Country. I'm Kyle. He's Dennis. The Tuscan Italian Grill Halftime Show. And Dennis and I had our pregame meal over there at the Tuscan earlier. And Mr. Jarvis fabulous as we've always come to know and love great service great food we even you and i even asked for a little something particular with our order we wanted our fries a little crispier and they made it happen it was wonderful they sure did and uh, when we walked in the door they said uh miss seeing both of us tuesday since you and i were at lunch somewhere else they're used to us coming in for rotary and having the buffet but i had to, i've been jonesing one of their philly cheesesteaks really bad and uh my usual lemonade with two lemons and if I remember right, you got the uh, uh, buffalo chicken sub. Oh, yes. Yeah. It was wonderful. It was just spicy enough. I had a little blue cheese on the side there which it, with it, which I prefer on the buffalo. Some people like the ranch. Some people like both, and that's fine, too, and they'll, they'll make that happen as well. The service, like we both said, excellent. It was quick in and out and oh, easy, too. I mean, the food was on the table, really, before we blinked an eye. I mean, that's an exaggeration, folks. You know what I'm talking about here. But the food was out in a timely manner, and we got to our destination plenty of time here to watch some football. And, and you know, I think we, uh, I think some of the our, our fans across the way from Gretna have listened to us, uh, know what we, they didn't know what we know, and they wanted to check it out because there was about two or three people with Gretna attire on in there checking out what is uh, 
one of the uh, wonderful traditions for Alta Vista, and uh, that was kind of good to see. I think we gave them a little bit of ribbon saying that uh, don't bring their crop fries out as extra crispy as ours, but huh. I enjoyed it, and, uh, you know, they were pleased to see us, and uh owner even came out and thanked us uh, for eating there and thanked us for our patronage, but i got to thank him for keeping us, uh, me, uh, my bulky attire, my buffy attire here. So, uh, keeping you fed? Yeah, keeping me fed. You know, my, my Lori's away right now, and I'm not a, uh, you know, I cook sometimes, but on a football night, I didn't feel like cooking. And, no, uh, no, you gotta you got to focus your energies on this great ball game we have right here, and it is a good ball game. It's a 7-6 to six Gretna Hawk lead, the difference being the Hawks converted their extra point. The Alta Vista Colonels did not. It's a close ball game just up the way in Rustburg, Rookville leading the Red Devils at the moment 9 to 6. Don't think that game is quite at halftime yet, but I'll find out here in a moment. If you joined us late, it, it was Jordan Berger with the touchdown to open up the proceedings for the Gretna Hawks on their first drive. I thought it was Tabor and Mabins, but they put Jordan Berger back there at the quarterback spot. He rushed it into the end zone from 1 yard away. Later on in the second quarter, the Alta Vista Colonels put together what Dennis and I thought was one of their better drives of the year, if not their best drive of the year, a 74-yard scoring drive capped off by a Jacob Adams 23-yard rushing touchdown. And don't forget, that was an option play. you got to give Christian Gilbert full credit for making a nice pitch, getting it on target so Jake could get started and get outside there. Uh, man, Tuscan Italian Grill halftime show. Uh, you were getting ready to make a point there, Dennis. Go ahead. Uh, you know, just like you have many options on the menu in the evening, not the buffet we've grown accustomed to during the week for lunch, we had we saw three different running backs on that 74-yard play. We had Jonathan mm -hmm. Montague, we had Shaheen Parnell, and then we had, uh, well, four, Jacob Adams, yep. Jonte Gore, five. Five different people carrying the ball, touching the rock for the Colonels. And, you know, two weeks ago, we didn't have, we were lucky if we had one individual uh, netting positive yardage. We were at halftime at that game. We had negative rushing yards because Christian was getting sacked, couldn't get out on the scene. We couldn't get out in the alley. And, you know, our defense, the Colonel defense, Mr. Triplett's been back there. Yeah. We're calling uh, uh, Mr. Reynolds' name, Biggie. We're yeah. calling him. You First know. play of the game, I think, yes. he was in the back. Keyshawn Moon. You know, we're calling some guys. And, you know, I wonder what their pregame meal was. You know, Rotary served up some fried chicken last week. Maybe there were some pizzas or some subs from uh, the Tuscan Italian Grill sent down to the boys before pregame tonight. So maybe... That extra pip in her step is a, a jalapeno off the Southwest burger with some pepper jack cheese. Maybe, might be. <laughs> you know I like the hot stuff. Keep talking. <laughs> Keep talking. Get the hot sauce out. Well, that's a, <laughs> That is one of the premier hamburgers in the in, in A Town. Is that Southwest burger with that pepper jack cheese and those really ripe uh, jalapenos? And man, I'm just so impressed with the way the Colonels are playing tonight. And uh, you know, I, I hope I left a good enough tip for the. Nice staff up there at uh, Tuscan Grill. I hope they're, hope they're not going to not smile at us the next time we come in. Well, it's the thought that counts for sure. They'll always smile at you whether you leave a big tip or none at all. They'll give you a smile. It's the Tuscan Italian Grill Halftime Show. The Tuscan is just off Route 29. It's convenient for everybody. They're in the Aaron Shopping Center. They're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Gretna 7, Alta Vista 6 at halftime. We're back with more right after this on 105.5 KD Country. PCM Industrial of Alta Vista offers mobile welding and repair services, fully equipped service trucks, certified craftsmen, and quick response to satisfy your needs. Contact PCM Industrial at powerconstruction.com. PCM Industrial is a fully insured Class A licensed contractor, OSHA and MSHA compliant. PCM Industrial Services of Alta Vista wishes Coach Charnas and the Alta Vista Colonels football team good luck in another winning season. Go Colonels! Your home is your biggest investment. It must be handled properly. Let the professionals at D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling handle your home issues. Donnie and his trained professional staff are ready at 434-841-1580. They can make sure your home or business HVA system is ready. Ready for the rest of the summer and ready for the upcoming fall and winter. Call D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling at 434 841 
841-1580. That's 841-1580. D.L. Bryant is ready to protect your investment. English Construction Company has been in the building business since 1909, so it's only natural that they appreciate the building process. They recognize the fact that organized sports programs build character as well as bodies and minds. They know that high school sports build our youth into more well-rounded and more productive adults. English Construction Company is proud to be a sponsor of high school sports and salute all athletes, coaches, and teachers. A word of praise and encouragement from English Construction Company with offices in Lynchburg. Your station for high school sports play-by-play -play is 105.5 KD Country. The Alta Vista Colonels and the Gretna Hawks locking horns here for one half, a pretty tight ball game. You can't get any closer of a margin here for the Gretna Hawks. They lead 7-6. to six. The Alta Vista Lady Colonels volleyball team in action tonight up at Appomattox. Maybe our good pal Dave Mabry has got us tuned in with the KD Country app. Maybe he can send me some updates from the volleyball game over there and uh, say hello to any other volleyball fans that might have us tuned in. And we'll say hello just to all the Mr. and Mrs. football fans out there in the audience. We're glad you're tuned in with us. Maybe the rain kept some of you away, or maybe you wanted to uh, do some other things on this Thursday night. Appreciate having you along for the ride. Dennis, it's a one-point lead for Gretna. This is now about the usual time where we discuss maybe some possible adjustments that each ball club could slash should make. And, again, I think Gretna is, for their coaching staff, maybe a little bit frustrated about some missed opportunities, but I don't think the Hawks are playing bad either. I don't think they really expected maybe – this much out of the Alta Vista Colonels, although I could be wrong about that. Maybe they expected the full fight from Alta Vista, you know, and they said, hey, guys, two weeks ago was not Alta Vista's A game. You better have, better expect more than that tonight. You know, uh, I've been uh, saying when we're at home, when you're the visiting team, you better bring your A game to A-Town. Our hometown Colonels brought their A game like with none that we have seen, maybe since the fourth quarter of uh, Lunenburg, maybe – Quite honestly, more passion, more drive, more heart than even we saw against William Campbell or Rutzberg or last week against that Triple A juggernaut in Dan River. So, well, that you know that was going to be a point that I was going to get to. It was a seven to six Dan River lead last week. It's a seven to six Gretna lead right now. How do the Colonels avoid what happened in that disastrous third quarter last week against Dan River? Uh, you're more evenly matched. Uh, you know, you're not playing an offensive line that is uh, bigger, bul uh, bulkier, and quicker. Uh, you're playing a team that's, uh, you, you know a little bit about this time, too. Not only do you have game film that you've watched prior to a week, you've got your own game film, and you see where you made some mistakes. You know, uh, two weeks ago, you would have seen the uh, loose of, of fleet of foot uh, signal caller for Gretna. He rolls out right. Uh, b breaks a tackle, he would have caught that a guy in a corner, Gretna wide receiver for a touchdown. Not on this night. And uh, I think we're just going to see the same type of ball from the Colonels. Very methodical, very well uh, solid run up the middle, run out to the bounce up to the corner, find the seam in the alley. Maybe Christian pitches the ball to someone. Maybe he picks up another two or three yards. Uh, this defense for the Colonels tonight has grown every week. Uh, we had that big stumble toe against Stanton River, an even bigger one against, in my opinion, against Gretna two weeks ago. Uh, I don't see a lot of adjustments. You just, just come out with that same intensity and fire and don't make those mistakes. Don't get off sides. Don't fumble the ball. Play sound fundamental football. No turnovers yet for either ball club. That could factor large in the second half. Maybe the team that does pick up a turnover or two will be the team that goes on to victory. The Tuscan Italian Grill halftime show is done, and we'll mention one more time, they're just off Route 29, just off the Clarion Road in the Aaron Shopping Center. They're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. The lunch buffet, affordable, delicious, and plentiful, all you can eat. You know, tomorrow night, I may have to go back because we were leaving. One of the specials on the board we should have paid attention to was the Meat Lover's Lasagna. I saw that. Yeah, I did too. And I was like, heard of Meat Lover's Pizza. Right. But my gosh, how much meat can you stack in some uh, with ricotta cheese and noodles? Well, I'm looking forward to maybe trying that. I have a feeling over there they can make it delicious. I have a feeling we're in store for a very good second half. Hope you'll hang around. 
mentioned already, it's 9-6 to six Brookville over the Rustburg Red Devils at the moment. We'll keep our eyes on that and certainly get you some more updates when we get them. Alta Vista scheduled to receive in this English is your complete home center third quarter. English is, is on North Main Street in Alta Vista. They're your home for Carhartt clothing for men and women. It's durable, fashionable, cl fashionable clothing that lets you live the lifestyle you want. Tough, dependable. That's Carhartt, and it's available now. Many styles and shapes and sizes at English is your complete home center. A lot of big football fans over there at English is. A lot of them tune in nearly every game. Hawks will kick off. It's Maurice Thompson that does the kicking duties. He'll squib it right down the middle. It's picked up on the bounce by Jonathan Montague. He's angling to the near right sideline, thrown down as he slides at the end of the tackle after the stop from number 30, Bryant Davis. Davis helps him up. Again, a lot of good sportsmanship. You talked about the rivalry, but for the most part on the field, we don't see the same kind of bad blood that we used to see years ago, and maybe the social media has something to do with that now. I think guys nowadays seem to be more apt to they'll hit you hard, but then they'll be the first guy that helps you up off the ground afterwards. True. I thought that was a smart play trying to get out to the sideline by Jonathan on that, picking that uh, snafu of a kick up too. Colonels are going left to right in this third quarter. Near right hash mark. Hand off to Shaheen Pinelli. He had to run over one of his pulling linemen there for a moment. That slowed down the progress of that first down running play. Gain of one and a half. 11.40 left to play in the Englishes. Your complete home center. Third quarter, 7-6, to six, the Gretna lead. Kyle, you've seen the same type of offense mindset coming out of the, out of the uh, locker room for the Colonels, running right back up with our big guy who's averaging 4.9 yards of carry in Shaheen. Power running between the tackles, content to get two, three yards, maybe sometimes break a long one like they did on the 23-yard Jacob Adams rushing touchdown. Christian Gilbert will fake the handoff and this time keep it. Ends up turning into a rugby scrum out there just off right tackle. Net gain of one, maybe two. It'll bring up third and six from the right hash mark for the Alta Vista offense. Clad in the black home jerseys with the orange and white stripes. You got that Oregon State Beaver look tonight. That's it. Between the tackles again, Dennis. They need six yards for a fresh set of downs this time. Might be thinking about trying to run the option play. We'll see. Jacob Adams is set up on the left wing. Watch him. They'll put Jonte Gord in motion. Instead, they'll run the option that way. Pitches to Gord. The ball's on the turf. The ball is free. He got kicked around. Players diving after it. I think it's still loose over there on the far sideline. We're going to have to wait for an official signal. The Hawks saying that they it have it, and the official agrees. It it's Gretna Hawk football after the fumble at the 36-yard line. Coach Sharn is going to come out and object in one of the rare times that you'll see him get out on the field and argue a little bit. He does not agree with that call. Maybe he's asking if it was a forward pass on the option pitch. Either way, Alta Vista has committed a turnover. I mentioned nobody had turnovers yet, Dennis, and then you see one right there. You know, last week we started the halftime with a, a full moon, and uh, I said, is that a, a harbinger or is that a bad moon horizon? And with first possession in that second half last week, kind of went the same way. Uh, that ball was just wet. I don't think there's anything more than that. Shotgun formation for the Hawks. Receivers to each side. They hand it to Jalen Myers. Myers yeah. making a beeline for the far sideline. Pushed out of bounds around the 32-yard line. Colonels got to him. It ended up being not that big of a gain, even though Myers did a lot of running. He ran all the way across the field. He ran probably 40 yards across he, the field to he, pick up two. He ran up and down Bedford Avenue twice on that play, and I think he was really scared that DT Daniel Triplett was there to scare him. Left hash mark. They hand it to Myers again. He's going off right tackle, collided with an Alta Vista tackler, still on his feet at the 30-yard line, now dropped there. Gretna, Gretna, pardon me, is working right to left or back towards Bedford Avenue, as Dennis mentioned. Fire truck is out here from the Alta Vista Fire Company with the American flag up high in the sky. Second, pardon me, third down and a long one for Gretna's offense. They've got a blocking back in the game here, a wide receiver to each side, and a tight end to go along with it. Offside. Jordan Berger in there at the quarterback spot again. He was going to run it himself, but the flag does come out. You heard Dennis sort of whisper it. It is offsides on the Gretna offense, or a false start, whatever you want to call it. It'll back him up five yards. 
penalties again, Dennis. Penalties have burned the Gretna Hawks here tonight mm -hmm. just a bit. Mm -hmm. Didn't see that two weeks ago. What I read in the box score from the game at Wayne Campbell didn't do that either. We saw this last week with Dan River. Our defense takes these offenses out of the game and, and messes with their head. Real pleased with what we see out of the Colonels. Same formation for the Hawks. It's Berger in there again. He's going to go off left tackle. Good blocking. Colonels met him. That's Jonathan Montague. Now the rest of the team converges. Berger is only going to get one yard on the quarterback keeper. It'll make it fourth and three now. So they actually gave him about two and a half or three yards. Ball's on the 30-yard line. Hawks look like they're going for it here in fourth down. They're 0 for 2 so far tonight on fourth down, Dennis. And the Colonels' defense with another one of these opportunities to get the football back on fourth down. You know, when you're playing a, a rival again and you're coming down to the last weeks of the season, we're playing for playoff position football. This is why Gretton's going for it. Mavens wants to throw in the slot, Sorry. heaves it out. Diving catch is complete or incomplete? No, this incomplete official says the ball hit the ground. Yes. They were looking for... Dominic Meeks, the pass was just a little bit to his off shoulder, and that official was on it right away. Right. He said the football hit the turf. It is an incomplete pass, and another fourth down stop for the Colonels' defense. That's three in a row, Dennis. Three turnovers on downs for the Gretna offense. Fantastic, and I want to give a, I want to go get a raincoat and a water bottle uh, and a drink for uh, like the water boy t for that referee being right on the spot. Seeing what we saw, that pass dropped. He couldn't follow through with it because the other official that was going to call it a complete pass. So right place, right time. Great, solid play by Colonel's defense, and you're right. Let's get fired up, guys. And think back to the third and short situation where Gretna had another penalty that hurt their chances, too. Running play, it's off to Shaheen Pinnell. He got knocked around and then planted finally at the 31-yard line. Clock moving with 8.45 left to play in the English's your complete home center third quarter. It's still a one-point lead for the Gretna Hawks, 7-6. If you joined us late, Hawks scored in the first quarter. Alta Vista answered in the second quarter. A lot of punting and a lot of good defense on both sides. Kyle, that was Jonathan Montague carrying the ball last time. Johnny's still in there off the right hip of quarterback Christian Gilbert. Gilbert accepts the waist-high snap and hands it to Montague again, straight up the middle, maybe favoring the left guard just a tad for a four-yard pickup. Third and five on the way for the Alta Vista offense. Moving left to right from our perspective with 8.05 left to play in the third quarter. Trailing by one. Gretna's defense has done a nice job. I guess you'd call it bend but don't break. I mean, they've given up some yards here to the Colonels, but they haven't given up very many long plays. Really just the one touchdown from Jacob Adams. The only play I can think of that's been more than about six or seven yards, I think, Dennis. Very true. Very true. Third and five. Gilbert fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, just runs into a big mess. Play hasn't stopped yet. Now the whistles come out. It was a lot of standing around, not even much pushing. A lot of times, ball carrier gets trapped in that pile. Everybody starts to push, but that time it looked like both teams were content just to sort of huddle around. Fourth down on the way for Alta Vista. It looks like Shaheen Pinnell coming out probably to punt this ball away. Kyle's too early in the game. Uh, the roll some dice, and it's too early in the game to uh, you're on your side of the field. So I, I do agree with you. It's going to be a punt, and Gretton has got their receiver, their deep man back just in case. Yeah, Colonels are on their own 31-yard line. Pardon me, their own 36-yard line. Good this point. is an end-over-end line drive kick from Pinnell that will spin out of bounds at the Gretna 27-yard line. So the Hawks will take over there with... 6.55 left to play in the third quarter. They sport the one-point lead. I'm Kyle. He is Dennis. Katie, our sound engineer. We had a birthday today, Dennis. Our other talented and fabulous sound engineer, Eleanor Haney, celebrating the birthday today on October the 12th. You know, I did not know that. We should have uh, sang happy birthday to her earlier. But they don't like me singing anymore since halftime of last week. So. Oh, that's right. They, yeah. did, they did shut you down on that. They said no more singing from Jarvis. Oh, Mavens throws a lateral pass, and it is incomplete. It was going forward enough. I thought there was a chance maybe that was a lateral or a backwards pass. It's just an incomplete pass for the Gretna Hawks, and it'll make it second and ten. Uh, you know, you can see a little frustration on Travis Hogan, the uh, wide receiver from Gretna, threw his hands up going, 
ah, if I had just been a little lower, I know he he was had a wide open Bermuda grass ahead of him. But this rain's starting to pick up. This passing game is going to dissipate and uh, go the way of the dodo bird in the second half. You can tell that Mavens is a bit frustrated too. He's normally much more accurate than this. Wide receiver sweep. Colonels hit the ball carrier hard at the 30. Able to get the second effort and second win to the 34-yard line. Ball popped out. Jonte Gord scooped it up, but the runner was down. And it was, I believe it was just Jalen Myers out there lined up as a wide receiver. It took the sweep. They actually give him more like six yards. Sets up third and manageable for the Gretna offense in the white jerseys, blue helmets, blue pants. Moving right to left, back to Bedford Avenue. Mist and rain out here pretty much all night. Running play again. Ooh. Mavens keeps it himself. Going off right tackle. Tries to spin out of a tackle. Oh. He does. Look at the effort from Tabor and Mavens using all the moves there to get the first down. A spin move in between the right hash and numbers there that really freed him up and gave him enough space to pick up six yards on the running play. You know, what a difference a lot of things two weeks make. What a same kind of what we're seeing out of Mr. Mavens. He's a sophomore. He's elusive. He's quick. Uh, he, he's smart, very methodical, most impressed uh, sophomore I've seen in a long time. Oh, yeah, very good player. Wide receivers are stacked up outside for the Gretna Hawks. Running play up the middle. Running back is breaking free across the 50 to 40, inside the 30, met by a combo of Jacob Adams and Shaheen Pinnell. Hard running there from, I believe it was number eight, Dalen Miller that time. Eating up the turf for a big gain for the Gretna Hawks. They're back inside the 25 and knocking on the door. The Alta Vista defense going to have to make another big stand. They've done it three times in a row. We'll see if they can come up with another one. First and 10 for the Hawks. Middle of the field on the Alta Vista 24-yard line. Running play again. That time running back met by Daniel Triplett there. Yes. I think so, and I think there was another colonel in on the play as well on the stop. I think it might have been Jaquel and Jones. Seven-yard gain for the Hawks. They're starting to work a little bit more efficiently on offense. Running play again off right tackle, angling back to the middle. Stopped, but not before the Gretna Hawks work another first down. They're inside the 10 now. I think that's number eight, Dalen Miller, on the carry again, Mr. Jarvis, correct me if I'm wrong, though. I think you're correct. It's a uh, last time we played Gretna, it was hard to see their numbers because they wore all black with those blue numbers. White tonight, a little easier to read. And there he goes again. Give it to him again. Same play, off right tackle. Certainly the Hawks seem to be trying to exploit that running area again. This time, not as much yardage picked up though as the Alta Vista defense tightening. A two-yard gain there for Miller. Clock moving with 5.10 left to play in the third quarter. It's a one-point Gretna Hawk lead. They're knocking on the door again. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. It would be right at the one-yard line or so. Maven's going to keep it himself. Going to the left side. Has some room. Got cut down by the converging Alta Vista secondary right at the goal line. Gosh, he's on the one-yard line. Now here comes the power package from the Gretna Hawks. They're sending in some fresh personnel. Wonder if Jordan Berger is going to go back there at quarterback again like they've been doing. First and goal from the one-yard line. It is Berger in at the quarterback spot. Good call because that's what I was going to tell you. He's under. He's back to get the ball. Takes the snap going off right tackle. Got hit by three colonels. I believe he's about a yard short. No, they signal touchdown on the far sideline. Jordan Berger is in for the second time tonight. From one yard out again, really the same play. Jordan Berger off right tackle. I tell you, Dennis, the Gretna offense likes to run behind that right guard and right tackle. They see an advantage over there, and they seem to go to it a lot more on that drive. You know, Kyle, that was uh, just mere millimeters, nanometers that, that the football got across. I, was, I spied with my, my binoculars. Uh, real impressed with the Colonels to at least hold and try to stop him, but he's, he's just a little quicker than our, our defensive line. Berger is a hard running back. He takes it at the quarterback spot, but he just really turns it into a running back situation. Uh -oh. Snap no good for the Gretna Hawks. Yes. They're going to try and yes. go for two, and the Colonels won't have it. Stop there, so that could loom large later on in the ball game. Make a note of that. The Gretna Hawks do extend their lead, though. 13-6 to six, Gretna advantage at the moment. We've got 4.35 left to play in the third quarter on 105.5 KD Country. Good.
High School Sports Action on 105.5 KD Country. The Gretna Hawks score on their second possession of the second half, a 72-yard drive put together by the Gretna offense and a nice methodical drive for them. A lot of running plays. They did try the pass play early in the possession, but after that, they kept it on the ground and, as I pointed out, seemed to be favoring the right side of that offensive line. They are. It's a good call. And, uh, you know, we've gone... We've seen this in the weeks past. You know, it's tight first half. Uh, we hold them on the first possession. Gretna is just a little quick, a little fast. We're going to put the ball back in the air, and we're going to get Colonel football underway. Ground ball kick again for the Alta Vista Colonels. It's scooped up by Jaden Gilbert. Gilbert makes a couple guys miss. Now he runs into the teeth of the Gretna return and thrown forward for a solid 10-yard kick return. He's... Going to get marked down on the 41-yard line. Colonels will take over there, trailing 13-6. to six. Four and a half minutes left to play in this third quarter. It's presented by English as your complete home center. Kyle, we got the ball uh, almost the positive side of the field. Uh, we've got a good offensive scheme, though, so far, a uh, whole game. And it looks like we've got a timeout. A uh, quick the, bit timeout. They left the, the kicking, kicking tee. tee out on the field, and the coach or slash manager that ran out there to get the kicking tee lost a shoe on his way out so we had multiple pieces of equipment on the field although not the conventional uh -oh. ones gilbert uh -oh. the throw he's got adams open at the 40 adams catches he's across Woo! the 20 nobody within five yards of jacob adams the alta vista colonels have not thrown the ball much tonight but when they decide to they suck the gretna defense in and strike from 59 <laughs> yards away, it's a pass and catch from Christian Gilbert to Jacob Adams. Adams in for the second time this evening. That's nine on the year for the senior. And the Colonels, are they oh. going to kick it? They are going to try and kick the extra point and tie the ball game at 13. Right now, it's 13 to 12. How about that? A great run action type of fake to start the play. Adams with a great route. Gilbert delivers the strike. And then the speed of Jacob Adams does the rest. He's on to hold now for the new kicker. It's Joel Ruiz Cousy, and the kick is good, and we're tied at 13. Oh, we told you we were going to have fun on a Thursday night. 4.17 left to play in the third quarter on 105.5 KD Country. Service you can trust and prices that work for your family. During the moments in life that matter, you'll be able to feel the difference made by family ownership. Finch and Finch, family serving families since 1905. Finch and Finch, funeral and cremation service. A family serving family since 1905. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. We're tied 13 to 13. 417 left to play in the ball game. The Colonels haven't been this close in the third quarter in a while. Remember, they haven't won a game since August. They've had some leads sprinkled in there, Dennis, but not at this point in the third quarter. This is fun to watch. You know, to the right of us, the Alta Vista coaching staff, uh, someone called that play down and said, hey, guys, I see something. We're going to see this in the second half. We're going to do it. They were clapping. They were cheering. They were up running. And we haven't seen the coaching staff for the Colonels get emotional in a positive way for many weeks. So I was real pleased that we were able to see that out there tonight. Fun to watch. Fun to see the Colonels show a lot of fight in this ball game. Remember, it was a blowout Gret the win a couple weeks ago. 39 to nothing, a game that really, after the first quarter, Alta Vista was not in. The Gretton mm. crowd on the far sideline, I wouldn't say they're shocked, but they're probably surprised. Ooh. This is a great kick from Alta Vista. It got fielded on the one-yard line there by the Gretton Hawks return man, and oh. he stopped inside the 15. A flag comes out very late. It came out from afar, too. Got to sign that uh, referee up for the baseball team. He hurled that flag with the right hand. Yeah. That's something that would make uh, <laughs> something that would make the Nationals or the Cubs very proud tonight. Oh, Kyle, Kyle I'll tell you, he's a Red Sox fan. He threw that one way out of right field, and I don't know what the cause will be. He's picking it up. He was way out of uh, 
call that I can think, but they're huddling up here now, drawing football off. Seems to be packing Gretna up. Yeah, it's against the Hawks. Oh, it's a block in the back, I believe. Oh, yeah. You're Probably half the distance to the goal because Gretna was, yeah, that ball was on the 12. They're putting the ball on the 6. Now that's exactly what it is. So the Hawks will start this possession. 4-12 left to play in the third quarter. They're in the shadow of their own goal post. Colonel's not really showing blitz just yet. Four down linemen, three linebackers. Here's a running play. Oh, and the Ooh. running back has some room up the middle. It's Myers bulldozing past defenders. He's on his feet, dragging guys with him across the 30, now the 35, and he's down there. Shaheen Pinnell just trying to rodeo him down, and he finally did. But how about that? They're not in the shadow of their own goal post anymore after a big 35-yard rushing play. Kyle, it looked to me that uh, Gretna went big beef package on the front line. And old school run right up the middle, and thank heaven Shaheen was there to wrestle him down. Maven's going to keep it himself off right tackle. Hit low, slowed oh. down, but he's on his feet, twisting and spinning his way for 9 or 11 yards now at the last effort there. Tapering Maven's the sophomore running back, pardon me, the sophomore quarterback, not throwing the ball like he wants to tonight, but still moving the ball effectively with his legs. You know, it showed us uh, two weeks ago, tackle him high, tackle him low, but wrap up, follow through, make the hit count, follow through for your legs. But Colonel's you know, going to take the timeout, timeout. Mr. Yep. Jarvis. We'll take the Sorry. timeout, too. That's quite all right. It's a exciting times here on a Thursday night. We're tied 13 to 13, 30 second timeout on 105.5 KD Country. If credit card processing is important to your business, I can help. I'm Ramonda Davis of First National Bank, and I'm your local e-commerce officer for Merchant Card and other electronic business products. Local means I live in Central Virginia. I'm ready to come see you and respond quickly to what you need. Local means I'm focused just on your business needs. For the latest in electronic payment technology and competitive pricing, contact me, Ramonda Davis, First National Bank, member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Colonels take the time out, really probably to give their defense a little bit of a breather. They've given up about 42 yards, Dennis, in two plays. The Gretna offense backed up, but that didn't seem to matter. They are kicking it in high gear again. They scored in their last possession. Fresh set of downs from the far right hash mark. Mavens keeps it himself following the left guard and left tackle. Sizable pickup here on first down. Four-yard gain for the quarterback, Tabron Mavens. I mistakenly called him a running back, but there's a good reason for that. He runs the ball well. You know, it, it's not a mistake. He's an all, all-around player. He's a running back. He's a halfback. He's a safety. Oh, going to keep it himself. He's going to take off off right tackle. Oh, no. Mavens is free. Oh. Mavens is gone across the 20. He's in a full sprint to the end zone, but he didn't need to be because the Colonels, with nobody close, Tabron Mavens from 50 yards out like a bolt of lightning. He <laughs> sold the handoff fake, and then there was a lot of room on the right side, and he just busted loose. There was nobody in sight for the Alta Vista offense or the Alta Vista defense, pardon me, and just like that, we're not tied anymore. It's a Gretna lead, 19-13. Looks like they may be going for two. No, they're going to try the extra point, pardon me. Uh, it's uh, interesting, uh, you know, because that those type of uh, mistakes on special teams come back to get you late in the game. I wonder if this will be a good kick. Dennis, that was a four-play, 94-yard drive. Wow. A four-play, 94-yard drive. Line drive kick from Maurice Thompson is good. So the Hawks extend the lead. 20 to 13, Gretna advantage. Let's see what the Colonels can do with 312 left to play in the third quarter on 105.5 KD Country. It's cold in here. Will your heating system keep you warm this winter? Or will you spend a cold evening shivering under the covers? Have your heating system inspected today by Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling. Kent Tyree has over 20 years experience and specializes in heating, air, plumbing, and electrical. Licensed and bonded. Call for an appointment today. 309-2266. 309-2266. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. The sophomore do-it-all quarterback, Tabron Mavens, 
in the end zone from 50 yards out. His first touchdown of the ball game, he ran for three touchdowns against Alta Vista in round one, Dennis, and he also threw a passing TD there in that ball game. Gosh, that was a good-looking drive. A four-play drive, Mavens did the bulk of the work. You know, it was set up by that uh, deep in their end zone, uh, deep in their territory, Gretna, uh, first, first play, about, uh, what, 13, 15 yards on the first run. That's what really set it up. And you were right when you called the young man, uh, Mr. Mabins, a running back. He's elusive, he's quick, and he's a good dance partner. If you want to have a lead, a lead guy as your dance guy, he's it. Sure is. He plays defense, Ooh. too. He's a hard hitter there. The ball is free. It's scooped up by Jaden Gilbert for the Alta Vista Colonels. Not going to get much on the return as he's hit, trying to get back to the middle of the field. Alta Vista will start this drive on their own 33-yard line. This third quarter's taking some time. The first half flew by, but we've still got 3.06 left to play, and the English is your complete home center. Third quarter. I'm Kyle. He's Dennis. Thank you so much for tuning in on a Thursday night. Spotlight on us and the one other game in Campbell County, the Brookville Bees taking on the Rustburg Red Devils. Colonels had a one-play drive of their own last time out. It's a 50, uh, pardon me, a 59-yard passing touchdown from Gilbert to Jacob Adams. Looks like they want to throw again. Gilbert pump fakes. Now he's going to take it down and run. I think it was a design pass, but Gilbert didn't see the intended target, decided to tuck it and run, and did gain a few yards on a quarterback scamper. You know, Kyle, the, the rains went away. It's just a little mist. It's not as uh, apparent. The wind has died down a little bit. So maybe the coaching staff's going to see it. Let's call another play. We haven't seen a pass play on first down for a long time until that last possession. So... Uh, let's get some positive yards and keep this momentum going for the Colonels. Well, for a while, they were pounding the Hawks' defense with running plays, too. The safeties oh. are 10 yards oh. deep for Gretna. Oh. They're respecting the pass. Talk about respect. Shaheen Pinnell earned some there as he just bulldozed through the tackler at the end of the play. He was spinning around. I mean, he is carrying the ball with violent intentions, isn't he? Yes. You know, I, I called him the transit authority. We, we named our running game the transit authority week one. That school bus, that big bulldozer, whatever you want to call Shaheen, he dropped his shoulder, and I think that's why they're taking the timeout. Seems like the Gretna defender has not gotten up. Hate to laugh, but uh, that was a pretty vicious hit. Defender is down for the Gretna Hawks. It's third and two coming up for the Alta Vista offense. We'll step aside for a 30-second timeout. It's a seven-point Gretna lead, 20-13, to 206 left to play in the third quarter on 105.5 KD Country. Fun times are waiting for you at El Cazador, Alta Vista's oldest Mexican restaurant. Relax in comfort with daily food and drink specials, Mexican and American foods, and a children's menu too. Call for takeout or go online to ElCazadorVA.com. El Cazador is a proud supporter of community activities like high school sports and the Y. El Cazador is open 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. Stop by before or after the game. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. Football teams are back and ready to go here with 2.04 left to play in the Englishes, your complete home center. Third quarter, it's a 20 to 13 Gretna lead. Hawks led 7 to 6 at halftime. We were tied 13 all earlier this quarter. Gretna has scored back to back touchdowns in their last two possessions. Colonels put Montague in motion. They handed Shaheen Pinnell. He's breaking free. Nice cut at the 50. Another move down the far sideline. Still on his feet across the 35 and to the 30 yard line. Big time yards. Ripped off their 25-yard rushing play for the Alta Vista Colonels offense. They're on the move here with 137 left to play in the third. You know, this is one of those classic go-back-and-forth type of uh, rival games that anyone would think you throw records out the window, you throw whatever else out the window. And uh, I think Shaheen's going to say, look, I'm throwing everything out the window but the oven because I'm going to be hungry after the game's over. This is exactly the kind of hard-nosed competitive game we thought we would see in the first matchup. It was anticlimactic with a 39-0 Gretna lead. This time, they hand to Pinnell, and he doesn't find as much room. Maybe a two-yard gain on first and 10. Clock moving with 1.07 left to play in the third quarter. 
The lead right now is 20 to 13 for the Gretna Hawks. They've never trailed. We were tied 13-13. Colonel subbing some people in. Pinnell is headed out. Jonathan Montague is in. Second and eight on the way for the Alta Vista offense from the far left hash mark. Still working left to right in this third quarter. Offense is set and ready to go. Christian Gilbert looks over the defense for a moment. Now takes the chest high snap. Wants to throw. Looking for Adams. Oh, he was a little late getting out of the breaking route. And the pass is incomplete. He did get a hand on it. But the pass was sort of on the wrong shoulder there. And maybe the moisture. Maybe just an errant pass from Christian Gilbert. It makes it third and eight now for the Alta Vista offense. You like going back to the pass, Mr. Jarvis? Maybe that option run here on third and eight. Let's go to the option pass. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go an option down the left side here. Gilbert, ready for the snap, puts a man in motion. It is an option play to the right. Gilbert is going to get thrown forward for two or three yards. They were regretting the defenders all over him. He was not able to pitch the football, and it's probably a good thing that he didn't. Fourth and six coming up for the Alta Vista offense. Looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. They might use a timeout to think about the play call. No, they're going to let the third quarter run out. That's pretty smart. Clock will run down inside 10 seconds, and we've got 12 more minutes of regulation football here. It's a rivalry matchup that this time living up to the billing. Gretna leading 20-13, to 13, fourth and final frame on the way when you return to 105.5 KD Country. To become a Moose is an awesome feeling. You just can't belong to a better organization. I was born and raised in a Moose, and I'll be a Moose the rest of my life. My son is a Moose. We're three-generation Moose Loggers. That's, that's how it is with us. I hope everybody else that can join and become a member, you need to do it. You need to see what, what, it, what it does for us. Why I belong to the Moose. For friendship, for the children, and most of all for the seniors. What are you waiting for? Stop by the Moose Family Center in Alta Vista to learn more about how you can be a moose. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. It's a unique ball game in a couple different respects, Mr. Jarvis. We're playing on a Thursday for one. It's the second meeting of these ball clubs, and it's a rivalry game. And as I mentioned before we went to the break, living up to the hype this time. It is. And, uh, you know, it's a very different ball game. It's one Gretton is accustomed to. As you called early in the game, uh, you know, they're going on the road. They play tight games. They win tight games. Lost one last week. And, uh, you know, this is not an Alta Vista team we've seen the last three weeks. We are down only one score going into the fourth quarter and about to see what we're going to do, pick up potential first down here. Here comes the fourth down on the way. Pass. Passing play. Gilbert has some time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, wants to throw, is looking for Adams. Adams begging for the flag as he had a Gretna oh. defender really tangled up with him at the 20-yard line. There is not a flag on the field. It's a turnover on downs. Adams frustrated. Give Gilbert credit for keeping the play alive with his legs and then trying to find Jacob Adams in coverage. Unfortunately for the Alta Vista Colonels, they do not pick up the first down. It'll be Gretna football with a full 11 minutes and 53 seconds left to play in the game. Kyle, we haven't seen a lot of flags called in this game. It's only three by my rough math, my, my, uh, my scratch pad math here. And I really don't, I kind of agree with you there. That looked like a, should have been an interference call, but let's get this defense back in this and stop this momentum that Gretton thinks they have. It's a 20 to 13 Gretton lead. Here comes a running play again on oh, first no down, way. and the running back is breaking free. This is Dalen Miller. Shaheen Pinnell is going to not get to him at the 10 yard line. Touchdown, Gretton Hawks. A long one. Oh, goodness, Mr. Jarvis. A 73-yard rushing touchdown for the Gretna Hawks. Wow. You know, you called his name earlier, Dalen Miller. Young man on the last play that were backed up. Gretna was backed up on their six-yard line. He's the one that set that play up for uh, let their sophomore signal caller get out and bust out for a touchdown. This one is not going to be a backbreaker. This one is not going to be a nail in the coffin because the Colonels are not going to back down from this fight that Gretton is putting up on the road in our house tonight. Last drive was a four-play, 94-yard drive. This one is a one-play, 70-plus-yard drive that leads to points. Gretna has scored on their last three possessions. It seems like the Gretna Hawk offense starting to flex their muscle a little bit. Thompson on for the extra point. 
He scoots it over the crossbar, and it's good. 27 to 13. Gretna expanding the lead. We've still got most of the fourth quarter to play, though. Alta Vista football. It's award-winning high school football on 105.5 KD Country. A short drive will save you money. This is Greg Walker with Feller Chevrolet. Our new 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty has many customers buy from us instead of the competition. It covers any vehicle purchased up to 10 years old with less than 150,000 miles, new or used. With our three-day money-back guarantee, you can buy with confidence. Where else can you get great prices, good selection, three-day money-back guarantee, and a warranty that gives you 10 years of protection? Come see us. You'll be glad you did. Feller Chevrolet. In your station for high school sports play-by-play -play is 105.5 KD Country. Gretna 27, Alta Vista 13. The Colonels down but not out, although this recent Gretna Hawk explosion is cause for concern if you're an Alta Vista fan, Dennis. Uh, it could be. I, I think you need to, you think if you're a Colonel fan, you need to take a deep breath, uh, crack your back just like I did, and, and no that this is not two weeks ago. No, this is not Stanton River when we're down. The guys have been playing. The guys have been charging. And we've been moving the ball on this uh, Gretna defense that would not let us get up and down the field two weeks ago. I'm okay right where I'm standing. Maurice Thompson on to kick off again for the Hawks. This one's a little bit longer. It'll bounce out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Flag comes out there. Alta Vista will take over on the 35-yard line after the kick out of bounds 11 40 left to play in the fourth quarter it's presented by english's your complete home center your home for carhartt clothing for men and women atrium vinyl windows and doors davis paint all the brands that you know all the brands that you trust they're available at english's all right mr jarvis down but not out but the colonels could use some points on this possession don't you think ah uh, you could uh, and, and you need to. You need to go quick, though. You can't run a, a, a big chunk of time off the clock. You've got to be methodical. But if you've got a quick strike, you have to go. And let's see that uh, that dial up again to, to Jacob Adams and get somebody breaking down the field for 56 yards here. Those Gretna safeties are about 10 yards deep. I think they're watching for it. They'll give to Shaheen Pinnell. Wanted to go off left tackle, but there's no room there because number 52, Corlin Witcher, had him stopped and brought him down with a nice solo takedown. Corlin Witcher is, go figure, another sophomore, 6'1", 190 pounds, he is a well-put-together 10th grader. And you know, there's a 5'9", 190-pound running back in Shaheen, and that was speed on speed. And uh, the younger, uh, more elusive Gretna defender won that battle. They'll put Jacob Adams in motion. They want to hand it to him on the wide receiver sweep. He's got a full head of steam, uses the left arm for a stiff arm, forced out of bounds without going to the ground at the 35-yard line. Good pursuit from the Gretna tacklers across the field. It'll bring up third and ten for the Alta Vista offense. Far right hash mark. 10.55 left to play in the ball game. They're trailing 27-13, to 13, the Gretna advantage at the moment. You know, Kyle, when you have a four-time state championship coach and a stellar staff with some young men have grown each week in and out, this is where you're going to see that maturation happen. And we're going to matriculate this ball. Let's you see a little trickeration here maybe pick up a solid first down or even more i think it's going to happen third and ten colonels in the home white jerseys black jerseys pardon me with the black pants same formation it is a passing play they're looking for adams over the middle lost it there adams goes up to get it he's taken down by the neck it's a catch at the 50 yard line a 15 yard pickup from Christian Gilbert to Jacob Adams, a ball that was slightly underthrown, but Adams climbed the ladder, goes back, and gets the football out of the air as he's being hit. You know, it's just a great song analogy from Bruce Hornsby in the range and Huey Lewis in the news, Jacob's Ladder. Uh, I'm glad I called that. It's good soothsayer on me, and you're a great song, Taskmaster. Option play to the right. Gilbert's going to keep it himself, cuts right it back inside. He does have some room. How about Christian Gilbert running across the grain there for a moment for a six-yard gain? Now the Alta Vista offense with some new life, pep in their step. Great spot. It ends up being more like a nine-yard gain for Christian Gilbert. He hopped up a little bit slow, maybe something with the foot or the ankle, but he's going to stay in there. Adams is out for a moment. 
Same formation that Alta Vista has gone with really all night. A wing back to each side, a receiver to each side. Hand off to Shaheen Pinnell. He's spinning around and twisting at the end of the run. First down yardage gained. He's inside the 40-yard line to the 38. Ten minutes left to play in the ball game. Alta Vista trailing 27 to 13, but on the move here in the early stages of the fourth quarter. Like you said, Kyle, asked me earlier, should we be concerned? We were seeing some plays out of this offense we have not seen all year. They're moving the ball quick and efficiently. It's about to come back into play as we speak. First and ten. Gilbert hands off to Pinnell. Pinnell has some room across the 35. Grant, the defender, hauls him down at the 29-yard line. Pinnell was busting loose and breaking free. A nice stop there by the Hawk defender, number 74, who is Lamontavius Jefferson again. Called his name a few times. That was a key tackle. Sure is, and that's another sophomore from Gretna. That youth mo movement, that uh, that boy band kind of situation we talked about two weeks ago, just a pretty big hard hitters from Gretna. Option play going to the right. It's Gilbert and Adams again. Gilbert keeps it. He got hit hard and really spun around at the 30 or the 29, maybe a one-yard gain. He's a little slow to get up. He gets helped up by some offensive linemen. Colonels. Under nine minutes to play in the ball game now, 27 to 13, the Gretna lead. If you joined us late, it was another 7-6 ball game at halftime. The Hawks led by one. We were tied at 13 in the third quarter, and now Gretna up two possessions, trying to stop the Colonels here on a key third down play. Middle of the field from the 29-yard line. Alta Vista needs to get to the 27. Gilbert keeps it himself. He's got the first down and a bit more. Thrown down at the 20 by Lamontavius Jefferson again. Good job by Christian Gilbert. He's like a boxer that just keeps getting off the mat, Dennis. Yes, sir. And it's those gold shoes. You remember that old Mikey, Michael Jordan commercial from the early mid-'80s? It's the shoes. It's the shoes. The golden shoes, Christian Gilbert putting his shoulder down, and he's been getting up a little bit on these plays, a little gimpy, mm -hmm. and that offensive line have busted open a big hole for our, our signal caller to pick up that first down. Colonel's O-line doing a much better job tonight. They'll pull some linemen. How about Jacob Adams leading Go. Shaheen Pinnell through the hole, too? Good blocking there. That was a combo of Adams and then also Dakota Ashby that came from the left side of the O-line over to the right. Pinnell followed them through the hole for a five-and-a-half-yard gain on first down. Colonel's offense starting to flex their muscle a little bit and get in gear. They'll make some changes with the personnel. Kyle's Kyle. looking to the near sideline for the play. Go ahead, Mr. Kyle, Jarvis. Kyle, I think you're right, flexing a muscle. Uh, the down, two, down two scores come right back, and, and this is one of the best offensive series we've seen all fall uh, this season. Option play to the right. Oh, Gilbert thrown down. Tackler had him around the helmet. But not the face mask, apparently, as no flag comes out and it ends up being a four-yard loss for the Colonels. Maybe even a full five-yard loss, and that'll set them back a bit. Third and ten now. Jonathan Montague going to sub in the game. you got to believe they're going to go for it on fourth down if they don't get it here. But you'd certainly like to make a fourth down situation easier. You don't want to lose yards again and make it fourth and long. Third and ten, middle of the field. Ball resting on the Gretna 20-yard line. Alta Vista needs to get to the ten. Gilbert looks to the sideline. Seemed like he was unsure of the play for a moment. Now he's set to go. Takes a minute to examine the Gretna defense. Now takes the waist-high snap. Wants to throw on third down. Mm -hmm. Flushed out of the pocket. Stepped up. Hit and dropped. It does end up being a ten-yard loss. The Gretna Hawks defense relentless in their pursuit. Got to Christian Gilbert. Corlin Witcher was there. Lamontavius Jefferson there. And also Eli Bond in on the stop. You know, l let the listeners understand. Christian got back. His primary receiver was uh, was stacked up. Secondary receiver was stacked up. Uh, that big package that Gretna just brought in was a little too much power for our offensive line, and that just didn't this didn't materialize the way we probably wished it had. Daunting task here for the Alta Vista offense on fourth and nineteen. You expect maybe a pass, possibly time for a trick play, though. Wing backs to each side. It is a passing play. Straight drop back. Oh. Gilbert heaves down the middle, looking for Adams again. He dives yes. for it. He got up in the air, and he got hit while he was in the air. It's a pass interference penalty. The Gretna defense converged great, but they just hit Jacob Adams way too early. That time, it was almost an obvious pass interference call. Uh, you know, Kyle, we didn't see one earlier that we thought might have been this one obviously is, and they're calling that all you know interference 
on the Gretna defense. And, you know, we got this ball back with uh, about 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. You asked me, should we be concerned? I said, let's uh, crack her back, take a big sigh, take a deep breath, and follow the Zen master, the four-time state champion head coach, our riverboat gambler, and Coach Sharnas. I love what I'm seeing here on this position. I mentioned an earlier birthday. Another Alta Vista coach has a birthday. My sometime colleague, Mr. Troy Harris, tuned in. He has a birthday today. Happy birthday to Coach Harris. It'll be basketball season before you know it. It's basketball season year-round for him, though. All right, it's still fourth down, it looks like. The yardage not enough to give Alta Vista first down. They'll take a timeout. We'll take a timeout with the Alta Vista offense. No, hang on one second. Coach Sharnas may not want to take the time, Matt. Yes, he does. A little confusion there. <laughs> Our apologies on that. We're always confused. Under six minutes to play in the ball game. It's a 27-13 Gretna lead. Alta Vista has a fourth down on the way when you return to 105.5 KD Country. You can buy paint from any old yahoo who knows nothing about paint in one of those big box stores. For quality paint from people who really know paint, it's Davis Paints from your complete home center, Englishes. Davis Paints, which has been known for quality since 1921, is not just sold anywhere. Visit the new paint room at Englishes, your authorized Davis Paint dealer. Englishes. Englishes is your complete home center. On North Main Street, Alta Vista. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. These Thursday night football games ended up to be pretty fun, Mr. Jarvis. We should do this more often. The Alta Vista Colonels really need to pick up this fourth down here if they want to keep their chances in the game alive. It's fourth and a long three. They're inside the Gretna 20, so they're in the red zone here. A fresh set of downs would go a long way with 554 left to play in the ball game. Hawks leading at the moment, 27-13. Christian Gilbert's got the offense set and ready to go in the shotgun formation. Band hasn't stopped playing yet. Alta Vista tried the hard count. Option play to the left. They'll pitch to Jacob Adams. He catches at the 20, tries to lower the shoulder at the 20, or pardon me, the 17-yard the line. He stopped short. He will not get enough for the first down. The drive will come to a halt there at the 17-yard line. The Gretna defense, another bend but don't break. They turn Alta Vista over on down. You know, Kyle, three weeks ago, uh, we wouldn't have called this late in the fourth quarter. Two weeks ago, we didn't call anything. Last week, uh, attrition got to us. This week, this is typical out of this football that I've grown accustomed to listening for you for three years. Uh, let's make a, let's get a turnover here and turn this bubble game right back around where we know it should be. Colonel's defense needs a turnover bad. It's a 4-4 defensive alignment at the moment. The ball carrier tried to really jump over the Alta Vista defensive line, but Daniel Triplett hit him pretty solid, and so did Keyshawn Moon. It's a one-yard gain for the Gretna O. Oh, five and a half minutes left to play in the ball game. If the Hawks score one more time, that pretty much ends it. If Gretna's offense can even run some time off the clock, it would probably extinguish the Alta Vista comeback attempts, but you'd never know. Stranger things have happened. Tabern Mavens has his offense taking their time. It's a leisurely pace right now to get the plays in. They know the play clock, and they know the situation with the two possession leads, so they're trying to run the time down. Mavens takes the mask high snap, hands it off. Running back going off left tackle for not much yardage, maybe one. Jonathan Montague led the charge, also Keyshawn Moon, and again, Daniel Triplett over there on the right side making the tackle. You know, Kyle, Gretton is not going to do anything uh, fancy or razzle-dazzle. They're going to play solid. They're going to play sound football here, try to see if they can break one loose up the right side, uh, go off tackles we called earlier. Uh, they're going to take as much time off the clock as they can because they know Alta Vista had the momentum there, but couldn't pick that first down, though. Clock turning with four and a half minutes left to play. Here's Jonathan Montague, shot out of a cannon, hits the ball carrier, Dalen Miller, right in the left thigh pad and just drops him in his track. That is a loss of three. The Alta Vista Colonels use a timeout to stop the clock with 4.18 left to play in the ball game. We'll keep it right here for a moment because I don't think Alta Vista is going to use a whole lot of this timeout. It's going to be a punting situation, Mr. Jarvis, yes. on 4th and 12. Yes, sir. 
And that's a way to get right back in the ball game if you can break a punt return for a touchdown or at least long enough to set up a quick score, then the Colonels would have a lot of time to work with for the next score that they need down 27 to 13. A lot of time left uh, because you saw the way our our offense was running. And if you go back to the NFL uh, and what ESPN does, he got jacked up on some of the big hits. Jonathan Montague shot out of a cannon. That was a uh, more one of those smart like tow missiles shot off an M1 A1 uh, Abrams tank, which he kind of reminds me of. That was a well of a hit, and the uh, elusive fleet of foot Gretna signal caller kind of knew. Uh, he's like, uh, did somebody get the license plate number for that big truck just <laughs> running over me? Uh, this has been a hard hitting. A uh, well-played rival game, but good sportsmanship, as yeah. you said, on both sides. No no, no yakking, no back-talking, no sassing, uh, helping each other up off those tackles. I've been impressed by the sportsmanship of both squads this evening. Great point. Looks like the timeout is done. Clock is stopped at the moment with 4.18 left to play in the Englishes, your complete home center, fourth quarter. The Alta Vista Colonels. Are down but not out. They trail by 14. Jacob Adams is back deep to return the punt. Let's see if they come after it. Oh, the ball did oh, not get out of there. The Colonels yes. blocked the punt. Yes. Christian Gilbert has it and he'll score. It's a touchdown for <laughs> Christian Gilbert and the Alta Vista Colonels <laughs> on the blocked punt. Alta Vista making something happen and the game is not over yet. We've got 413 left to play in it. Christian Gilbert with a special teams TD, his third touchdown of the season. It looks like Alta Vista will kick the extra point. Kyle, football is about three phases of the game, and one of those, more importantly, always important is special teams. I know I got a little excited, but the brush came, the big house was there, and we scooped up the inerrant fumble and got a touchdown. Way to go, Colonels. First special teams score of the season. Here's the extra point. It's on the way, and it is no, no good. good. Pushed off to the right. So Alta Vista down eight. Might make the comeback a little bit tougher, but they still have a chance. 27 to 19. Hawks with the lead. They've got a chance to silence things maybe with a score. 413 left to play in our ball game on 1055 KD Country. That was Napa know how. Getting the best usually costs a pretty penny. But when it comes to getting one of the best motor oils, your pennies don't have to be pretty at all. Because Valvoline Full Synthetic Motor Oil is only $5.59 a quart. So treat yourself to Valvoline Full Synthetic, now just $5.59. That's Napa know how. Napa know how. General State's pricing. Sales prices do not include applicable state local taxes or recycling fees. Offer expires 9 30 17. Napa Auto Parts, Main Street, Alta Vista, across from Feller Chevrolet. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. Christian Gilbert scooped up the blocked punt, but it was a team effort to get there, Dennis. I don't even really know who blocked it because Alta Vista had four guys on the punter as he was trying to step into the right-footed kick. The snap was a little bit low. He had to take a couple steps forward. And all of a sudden, there were four black jerseys right on top of him, and Christian Gilbert ends up with the loose ball racing in for six. Uh, you know, we, we have, uh, the Colonels have been playing aggressive, assertive football on all three sides of the ball tonight. And there's been a couple of times that we've tried to get back there. This third time was the hat trick. It was the one. And what? Did you ever expect this 413 left in this fourth quarter, down eight? Two mixed extra points, and you only be down six. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm really pleased with the effort of, of Alta Vista on defense, on offense, on special teams. This is the most fundamentally sound game, full game, the Colonels have played thus far all year. Remember, these two teams played two weeks ago, and it was a 39-0 to Gretna win. The Colonels were never really in it. We'll be talking about at the end in the post game show. Colonel's got a block punt to get them back in it. They scored. It's a squib kick here. Jonathan Montague is going to mishandle it at the 30. Now he retrieves it. He'll angle back to the middle of the field and he's lassoed down from behind by 
number 21, Talon Miller of the Gretna Hawks. Colonels, last chance to dance here from the 31-yard line, their own 31-yard line. Last drive, they fumbled the football. Oh, excuse me, they turned it over on downs. They didn't complete a fourth down passing attempt. So we'll see what happens here. You'd like to score quickly. Then you could think about the onside kick again. But Alta Vista down 14, really going to need something to happen quickly to have any kind of a realistic chance. They'll put Jacob Adams in motion. They'll hand it off to Shaheen Pinnell, sifting his way through the defense. Made a cut at the 35-yard line, then got dropped around the 37. Clock moving with 30 seconds left to play in the ball game. You know, no timeouts left for the Colonels, Kyle. Get back up on the ball. Run one more play. Maybe we get in the end zone. They'll put Adams in motion again, left to right. They hand it to Pinnell again. Sidesteps one defender nicely. Now a second one. Tried to spin out of the third tackle and couldn't. That looked like... Number 21, Taylor Miller again that got him low and dropped him. Down to five seconds. Colonels are not going to run another play, and our ball game has come to a conclusion. Thursday night football lived up to its billing. It's a Gretna win, 33-19. to Post-game show on the way when you return to 105.5 KD Country. Your home is your biggest investment. It must be handled properly. Let the professionals at D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling handle your home issues. Donnie and his trained professional staff are ready at 434-841-1580. They can make sure your home or business HVA system is ready. Ready for the rest of the summer and ready for the upcoming fall and winter. Call D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling at 434-841-1580. That's 841-1580. D.L. Bryant is ready to protect your investment. There's just one place where students are students first and athletics are played with purpose and perspective that place is your local high school high school sports offer more than the joy of competition studies show that student athletes in virginia are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives including academics high school sports a winning part of a complete education brought to you by english construction company with offices in lynchburg <laughs> GMC Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage 1055 KD Country Post game show has arrived, and both teams, I think, probably feel pretty good about their performances tonight. It was a much better ball game for the Alta Vista Colonels than a few weeks ago against Gretna. Tonight, it's a 33 to 19 Gretna win. The Hawks, 13 points in the third quarter, Dennis, and then 13 more in the fourth quarter. Remember, it was a seven to six ball game at halftime. This game had a lot of ebbs and flows, a lot of ins, a lot of outs. A lot of exciting stuff, both teams with some chances. Gretna had the late fumble there where Alta Vista could have possibly driven down and tied the game with a two-point conversion. But the Hawks' defense, they they stood their ground when they needed to. I don't think we talked about Gretna's defense quite as much maybe as we should have. Uh, we, we didn't, but, you know, we talked about them ad nauseum uh, two weeks ago. And, you know, I quoted a Dylan poem uh, about eight, ten minutes ago. Um uh, you know, I, I don't know what else to say. I had something right there on the tip of my tongue. But, you know, uh, these good young men, these good young colonels, did not go quietly anywhere. And 14 points that we still, the well, scoreboard's off now, thankfully. Uh, those 14 points are not uh, the real tr tr true tale of the game. Uh, you know, this was one of those games that came down to who made the least mistakes and who capitalized. Special teams was the name of the game. Uh, missed extra points by both teams. Yeah. Uh, you know, the punt game for Gretna uh, is, a, I think, maybe a chink in that armor. Uh, it's a, a something that some people are going to watch game film in the weeks to come going into the playoffs. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying I'm sad. I, I'm just a little awestruck about how hard, how determined, how ready to go these colonels were and i don't think anybody around town if you talked all week i don't even think that anyone uh, kind of knew this was going to be the script that was set tonight 
for the round two of the Battle of 29. Excellent observations by you, and I think it's a uh, uh, just another reason why we should never underestimate Coach Mike Sharnas, his coaching staff, and the Alta Vista Ball Club because the record doesn't really matter for them. They take it one game at a time, as we've always said, and they, and they really take it one play at a time. The score doesn't matter either. This time it was a 33-19 to victory for the Gretna Hawks in a very nice win that moves Gretna to... Six and one. They bounce back from the loss last week to William Campbell. Alta Vista falls to one and seven. Gosh, that's hard to believe. It is. The season's not over yet, but things definitely haven't gone according to the script for the Alta Vista Colonels. The Brookville Bees at the moment have a lead on Rustburg, twenty to thirteen. That game is in Rustburg, and they're in the late stages of it, but not over just yet, and we'll keep our eyes on that one. Our show is not done just yet. Dennis and I will come back. We'll try and recap how everything went down tonight. We'll give you our players of the game. We'll take one last look at that brookville rustburg campbell County rivalry game, and then we'll let you head home on a Thursday night to watch some playoff baseball or maybe some NFL football. It was a fun one here. Gretna wins it 33 to 19. You heard it all live on 1055 KD Country. The game is brought to you by these members of the KD Country Sports Club. Radio Shack and Crystal Bay Pools, serving your area since 1989 for swimming pool installations, chemicals, liners, and more. El Cerrito, throw on a sombrero, shake your maracas, it's El Cerrito time. Authentic Mexican cuisine only El Cerrito can serve up. One Stop Mart, Main Street, Alta Vista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken is kicking. McDonald's of Alta Vista, proud supporter of the Alta Vista Colonels. Stop by or drive through before or after the game. The Dairy Freeze, with hot dogs, burgers, fries, and of course, ice cream. They're doing it right at the Freeze on Main Street, Alta Vista. Old Dominion Insurance, see Kim and Gil, your Erie insurance agents on Main Street, Gretna, next to Tyler Flower Shop. Thanks for sponsoring tonight's broadcast on 105.5 KD Country. Your station for high school sports play-by-play -play is 105.5 KD Country. Dennis and I are back for one more portion here on 105.5 KD Country. We appreciate you tuning in. Maybe you're just getting in your car. It was a Gretna win tonight, 33-19. Hawks scored first. Jordan Berger with the first of his three touchdowns of the evening. Alta Vista answered with a Jacob Adams 23-yard scoring run. Adams scored two times tonight. He's up to nine touchdowns on the season. He caught a pass from Christian Gilbert in the second half for a touchdown. Gilbert uh, picked up a block punt for the Alta Vista Colonels and scored in the fourth quarter. That gave them some seriously new life. Remember, at that point, folks, Alta Vista was down two scores. They blocked the punt on around the Gretna 10-yard line, and Gilbert picked it up and raced it eight or nine yards into the end zone for a score. Again, Jordan Berger, three touchdowns on the evening. Tabron Mabins had a 50-yard rushing touchdown that, man, he looked like Carl Lewis streaking down the backstretch in the Olympics back in the 80s one year. I mean, he was running very well. Tabron Mabins did not have his best night throwing the football, but he certainly got the job done for the Hawks. Dalen Miller added the other touchdown for the Gretna Hawks, too. That was a 73-yarder, if you remember, from Dalen Miller. That was when the Hawks were scoring often there in the third quarter. We were tied at one point in the third quarter, 13-13. to that, that, um, That's hard to believe. Hawks pulled away, and they ended up winning 33-19. to they, they did pull away, and uh, you know, uh, we talked about script. I don't think anyone would have scripted 1-7. But I don't think anybody would have scripted this outcome that two weeks ago, I know we keep saying this, this isn't even a, an Alta Vista team. I, I don't know who showed up. It was like a bad episode of, uh, of uh, X-Files. Someone <laughs> took our team, uh, body snatchers maybe. Someone took our team away, and I don't know who showed up. But I know who showed up tonight. Yeah, you're talking about two weeks ago two weeks you don't know who showed yes. up. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. I know who showed up tonight. And uh, the fans who braved the weather, the fans who braved this wind, uh, not a real uh, Mother Nature was kind of an equalizer mm -hmm. uh, because you know this tonight was uh, more of what I've seen in Alta Vista football the last two years 
uh, listening to your game call and watching games and going on the road. But, uh, you know, defense played sound. Uh, offense played sound. Our special teams has grown every week. And, you know, Kyle, it just got down there. That, that last the snap to the left, Christian had to scramble to get it. You roll outside. You thought you had a receiver. Toss it out of bounds. They call uh, intentional grounding. That backed it up, made it fourth and 17. And that drive, that, that you know, we fumbled. We scored on the block punt. They fumbled. We get the ball back. It was one of those games of the ages dialed up right there for our fans here at English Stadium and, more importantly, for our fans at home listening in tonight. It was a fun game to watch. Colonel showed plenty of fight, plenty of passion, and the Gretna Hawks were equal to the task. I don't think it was Gretna's A game at all, but they come away with a win. They moved to 6-1. and one. Alta Vista, we haven't mentioned much, has a bye week next week, fans, so we'll be off for a bit. When we do return, it'll be down in Chatham to take on the Cavaliers. I think this bye week is going to be very beneficial for Alta Vista, don't you, Dennis? Get rested up and yes. maybe put in some new plays, get more consistent. Uh, you know, we, we saw some, you know, a short week preparation coming off that uh, kind of stinging defeat last week to the hands of the Dan River Wildcats. We saw a different offensive set, like you called during the game. Yes, get we had Jacob Adams back fresh. We heard Coach talk about Aaron's going to get back. The defense is playing uh, very solid. You get that week off. Yeah. We're going to go a short trip down the road to play a Chatham team, not picking on the fans from Chatham and the Cavaliers, but we're an equalizer. I think that they've played some tough games. They've played a tough schedule. I've been looking at them, but, you know, so have we. And and it's going to be right there. We're going to be there. Uh, I hope everybody listens. I hope we get a great contingent of fans following us down. 29, one more Road Warrior game. And, uh, you know, what a way – for us, I just thought really right there. I told you at the timeout, I said, man, we win this one. We go down to Chatham, we yep. win. We head in. You know, not looking ahead, but what did – you know, we are a playoff-bound team. We know by just the sheer numbers, by right. power ranking. So, um, you know, and, and you're going to break this down soon, and we're going to say before we sign off, we're going to get some players of the game. It will be interesting to see what you say for uh, – I know what we're going to agree on for Gretna, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see for out the visit. <laughs> I don't know this. about that. Uh, before we get to those players of the game, senior volleyball star Addison Mormon wants to remind you and everybody else out there in Radio Land, Tuesday night is senior night for the Alta oh. Vista Colonels volleyball team. I think I'm reading that right. I think Tuesday night is senior night for the Colonels volleyball team. Now, of course, they're going to have some more games, too. They'll be in the playoffs, and some of those could be at home. But... Um, Addison is a, a big-time fan of ours, and we're a big-time fan of hers. All right, player of the game time. Now, you mentioned you thought you knew I was going to go with. I don't know if maybe you're thinking I'm going to pick Jordan Berger because he scored the three touchdowns. Hard to disagree with what Jordan Berger did out there. He played pretty great. The Gretna defense played wonderful. I think that I'm going to go with the quarterback, Tabron Mavens, though. And I think maybe Mr. Jarvis is going to agree. Maven's just a one touchdown tonight, and as I pointed out, not a slap in his face. He didn't have his A game throwing the football, but he made it work in other ways for the Gretna offense. He runs the offense well, and oh yes, just a sophomore. That's thank you. What a great segue. Just You're welcome. A, just a sophomore? Question mark. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, we're talking about that youth movement that's going on down there at Gretna. Uh, I agree with you. He is my player of the game. I've watched football a long time. It's very often, if rarely, you call the you see the kind of maturity maturity that a sophomore quarterback has. He's fleet of foot. He moves. He dances. He slices and dices. And tonight wasn't his A passing game we saw two weeks ago. But there were so many factors for that. Uh, yeah. A field, the not the right cleats, the wind, the rain. I uh, mean, he overcame all that, and he is their field general. He's really good. On the other side for the Alta Vista Colonels. I think I'm going to go with their field general. I'm going to go with Christian Gilbert. Uh, he just, man, what a night tonight. He had the passing touchdown to Jacob Adams. He had the block punt touchdown where they scored. He was roughed up several times. He had to get helped up off the turf by his teammates, but he kept going back out there. Christian Gilbert, a gutty performance tonight. Scored a touchdown himself, threw another touchdown, and there's some different directions you could go here, but Christian's my guy here tonight on a wet Thursday night football game. Wet Thursday night, you're right. And I, I want to give a shout-out to the Alta Vista coaching staff. 
they dialed up that play uh, from Christian Gilbert on the pass play to Jacob Adams that, that, that turned that momentum back the way we needed it to. Uh, offensive line played wonderful tonight. Our special teams played wonderful. I can't give a, a one shout out to an entire team, but I think we should. This is the most growth factor in a, a two bad weeks back to back in this Alta Vista team showed growth. I agree with you on Mr. Gilbert, those golden shoes. And he was the golden boy for us tonight, too, so I agree with you. Consensus there, and thank you so much for tuning in. We'll, again, talk to you next time. It will be October 27th at Chatham. That's our next ball game. It's a bye next week for the Alta Vista Colonel, so you'll get a night off from us. Maybe you can go check out another game or just enjoy the real country music. Special thanks to our sound engineer, Katie, back at home base. It was the Brookville Bees on top of the Rustburg Red Devils, 27-13. That game had less than a minute to go, so the Bees are going to win that one over Rustburg in a good performance there. Hawks have a good performance tonight. They beat Alta Vista 33-19. For Dennis Jarvis and everybody else associated with the broadcast, I'm Kyle Haney. We'll talk to you down the road when the Colonels go to play Chatham, October 27th. Until then, hope you stick around and enjoy some real country music on 105.5. KD Country.